Yeah. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to welcome everyone to the opening of our conference. My name is Inessa Cristina, and I would like to take the opportunity to thank you for accepting our invitation. I am very excited to see participants, speakers, organizers, and guests at the 8th International Scientific Conference to gather to discuss new problems, achievement, and prospects for the development of facing new challenges. I am very excited to have more than 300 participants from 15 countries to uh, but, um, but, uh, in our uh, conference. Honorary speakers at our conference represent the following countries, USA, England, Israel, Norway, Poland, Turkey, Uzbekistan, and Ukraine. Now I am honored to give the floor to the rector of Ivanov Kiev's National Technical University of Oil, Oil and Gas, uh, Dr. Professor Istafi Kryzhanitsky. Please welcome. Шановні учасники конференції, від імені ректорату Івана Франківського національного технічного університету нафти і газу вітаю вас з початком міжнародної науково-практичної конференції з питань сталого розвитку енергетики та природокористування. Dear conference participants, on behalf of the rectorate of Ivan Frankivsk National Technical University of Oil and Gas, I want to greet you on the beginning of the eighth International Scientific Conference on Sustainability in Energy and Environmental Science. У світі зелений енергетичний перехід супроводжується зменшенням частки видобувних галузей в економіці. In the world, the green energy transition is accompanied by a decrease in the share of extractive industries in the economy. Рішення стосовно декарбонізації продиктовані проблемами зміни клімату, які пов'язані з викидами парникових газів, відображені в проєкті нової глобальної кліматичної угоди, впливатимуть на ефективне використання енергії. The decisions about decarbonization are dictated by the climate change issues associated with greenhouse gas emissions, and are reflected in the draft of new global climate agreement. Саме на вирішення цих завдань спрямована наша конференція. Я бажаю всім плідної праці, отримання цікавих результатів і дякую, що ми з вами разом у вирішенні таких великих глобальних проблем. Uh, our conference is aimed at solving these problems and uh, I'm looking forward to the fruitful cooperation. Uh, and I want to thank all of you for um, the presence of our, for our conference. Thank you, Stasi Ivanovich. Now I would like to introduce moderator of our plenary session, Dr. Professor Ina Fadeva. Have a nice day. Okay. Uh, have a nice day, dear colleagues. Uh, I have great pleasure to welcome you to our conference and let's start our plenary session, let's start our job. Uh, so I want to uh, introduce right now and to invite to make a speech uh, the maybe the founder and the main organizer of our conference, uh, Vice Rector of uh, Ivano Frankivsk National Technical University of Oil and Gas. Doctor of Economics, Professor Liliana Goral, please. Thank you very much. Uh, dear colleagues, participants of the conference, I would like to express my wholehearted support for uh, the kind words addressed to you by the rector and welcome you at the conference. Uh, one moment, please. My presentation. Oh, let's start. Uh, the slides show uh, some conference-related data. So I am very pleased that each time our conference attempts to discuss an increasing number of uh, essential issues 
the purpose of the ACE conference is to develop the scientific and applied foundation of sustainable development uh, in energy and environment science. Our website highlights that sustainable development has been uh, emphasized at uh, all the conferences organized by the ivano frankivsk National Technical University of Oil and Gas. And now we pay great attention to it. Uh, to achieve the purpose of the conference, we will discuss the papers provided by uh, the participants uh, concerning the following areas. Sustainable development, modeling and original environment, uh, renewable smart and green energy development, risk management in energy, as and environment systems. Sustainable and efficient use of natural resources, environmental uh, science and technology, sustainable and efficient use of energy, green enterprise development, measuring, forecasting and monitoring sustainability, environmental management, agriculture and environment sustainability, global threats, disaster and mitigation, environmental restoration, ecological engineering and eco-technology. We, the organizer, are glad to greet every participant of this conference. Today we are pleased to welcome our program committee, consisting of the scientists and uh, practitioners in sustainability in energy and environment science from 16 different countries. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation and taking an active part in reviewing the submitted conference papers. A large number of papers were submitted to the conference. However, the selected papers best fit the conference topics, have the elements of scientific novelty, were written using a variety of research methods, and are based on the studies of other researchers in the field. Therefore, tomorrow we are going to listen to and discuss 43 reports, which are uh, regarded by the scientific committee of the conference as the most advanced, advanced as the result uh, can be implemented in practice. I am glad to say that the members of the scientific committee uh, of the conference are the famous science in the field of sustainable development and head of scientific schools. As regards the participants, uh, the conference is attended <coughs> by 267 people representing 65 universities and organizations from 16 countries. It is a pleasure to see among them the masters and postgraduate students, in particular the Department of Finance and the Department of Applied Economics of our university. The fact that the conference is attended by 204 doctors, habilitators and PhDs certifies the high research level of the conference. So, what countries are with us today? For the first time, the conference was supported and promoted in all possible no, ways by the participants from England, with whom our university closely cooperates. These are Coventry University, in particular Mr. Richard Tomlins, and the IOP publishing house that is going to publish and index the conference proceedings. Once again, we are happy to welcome two scientists from Poland, and their number is growing every year. And today we are going to listen to the reports by Professor Eva Matuska from Pomerania Academy in Slupsk, Mr. Giuseppe Cerella from the University of Gdańsk, and the welcoming remarks uh, by Mr. Dariusz Pawliszczy, head of the Gromadka Commune Office. Many scientists from Latvia and Slovakia take part in our conference. On behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to express best regards to Mr. Arnold Kiv, professor of Ben Gurion University of the Negev, Israel, who together with his colleagues 
was develop uh, an education platform for advanced training of the wax at energy companies in a pandemic and is going to represent it today. And of course, I would also like to name our colleagues from Ukraine who helped and supported us in uh, organizing the conference. They are the Solovyov's family from the State University Economics of Technology, who are the founders of the conference at the Scopus base in Ukraine. And also Andrei Maitrichuk, Kyiv National Economic University, named uh, after Vadim Hetman. Sergei Semirikov, Krivoyerik State Pedagogical University. Viktor Olinik, Suma State University. Olena Panuchnik, Ternopil Ivan Pului National Technical University. Oleg Kursky, Kyiv National University of Trade and Economics. And many scientists whose uh, scientific achievements and relevant and uh, significant uh, significant for sustainability in energy and environmental science. Thus, 44 Ukrainian universities from 15 cities and 11 regions take part in the conference. Having analyzed the articles, the organizing committee defines three sessions that are going to work tomorrow. On the slide, you can see the list of articles and sessions they belong to. In conclusion, I would like to express my gratitude to my colleagues from the Ivano-Frankivsk National Technical University of Oil and Gas for the high quality organization and their significant contribution to the eighth International Scientific Conference on Sustainability in Energy and Environmental Science in particular to the Associate Professor Inessa Hvostina, Mr. Oleg Yatsuk, uh, and the moderators of our meetings, Professor Irina Fadeyeva and Associate Professor Lilia Marinchak. Thank you for your attention. I wish all the succeeding conference to be face to face. So, uh... Right now, I want to, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Eva Matuska, uh, he, uh, Head of Organization and Management Department from the Ukrainian Academy in Slupsk, Poland, to make your speech, please. Thank you very much. Um, I don't know, I would like to ask organizers is that if I have to share my presentation of, uh, of Oleg obtained mine, because I don't know what is better. I could do, yeah, so I will do by myself in such way and uh, only for a while I have to do it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Sorry, it's, I have some problems. So only uh, in first words, I would like to say uh, to all uh, of you, uh, dear scholars and participants uh, of this uh, eight International Conference of Sustainability in Energy and Environmental Science, that it's a big honor for me uh, to attend secondly in this important event. And, uh, and I think that uh, we, we uh, have some, um, some satisfaction to see the same uh, faces like last year, but also new faces uh, uh, occur here. Only have to say that uh, today we meet in totally new circumstances and using quite new uh, um, tools to, to, to perform it. Uh, so uh, I can ass assume that uh, it is just ma many ma um, um, manifestation of the VUCA reality about uh, it. I had the pleasure to talk last year on that conference. Um, so uh, today, after new experience with uh, COVID-19, uh, we can expect always the another edition of the VUCA situation. And uh, uh, only what we could say that uh, it's necessary to be better prepared for it. And, um, and an important part in this uh, preparedness plays such conferences uh, like this one, uh, where um, we can share 
our latest uh, research results and discuss most effective models for protecting economic and social life. And um, the topic uh, sustainability in energy and environmental science is uh, enough a big um, uh, issue uh, to uh, to be um, uh, to be um, uh, quite um, quite uh, um, uh, um, sure that we will not finish during uh, one or second conference uh, uh, these uh, these solutions to a finding and but uh, it's necessary if we want to assure the sustainability in today a non sustainable world so. Uh, what uh, what can uh, we know from the science or some predictions which are proposed by uh, by by um, different research researchers or scientists that um, we need first uh, protect uh, and uh, and uh, assure green economy uh, we need more uh, managerial agility and also uh, what is the uh, the conclusion from from this hard time that we need a more humanocentric economy uh, as we uh, all first need to survive when we plan to develop so uh, i will not come back to my presentation because i had some technical problems with uh, sharing with you there were only two slides or three but uh, i think uh, these um, conclusions which are flying from from the science that the COVID uh, situations uh, challenging uh, uh, us all it is hard time, but it's also uh, some um, chance for changement. So we can expect that the rise of digit digital behavior, which, uh, which we um, observe in remote working and learning, telemedicine and so on, will, uh, will change, uh, will change um, a lot. And uh, the future of um, of uh, uh, um, of uh, economy will be never like before, and maybe uh, also these uh, changes we, which uh, which uh, we observing in society, um, where we observing attitudes um, and uh, the the about efficiency uh, and resilience and. Um, uh, some problematic uh, situations will also change the role of government and institutions which are um, um, responsible for creating conditions for sustainable development so in the last in the last words i only would like um, to say you that i wish our fruitful and interesting deliberation and also mutual kindness in sharing knowledge and experiences yeah. from your own researches and um, and um, and cooperation uh, so uh, on the end i would like to say that uh, when i was uh, reading somewhere in west publication sources success in global business is a function of professionals who have the ability to operate effectively in intercultural uh, situations so uh, such people will cultural ag agility uh, are here on this conference i wish you a good time on this conference thank you for the attention thank you for very interesting information which you get which you get from your speech thank you so much and uh, then I would like to invite Mr. Arnold Kim, Doctor of Physical and Mathematical Sciences, Professor of Ben Gurion University, Israel, with his greetings, please. Uh, uh, dear Arnold, uh, please switch on your microphone. Sorry, sorry. So open, yes. Now it's okay, yes? Yes, yes, okay. Dear colleagues, I will from beginning. I am delighted to welcome 
all participants of the conference on behalf of two universities, Ben Gurion University of the Negev in Israel and the South Ukrainian National Pedagogical University in Odessa, Ukraine. It's very important that despite the difficult circumstances caused by COVID-19 pandemic, this conference attracted such a <laughs> audience and is truly international in nature. Now all countries are making serious efforts to ensure that the forward movement of science and production is not interrupted under conditions, and this conference is a proof of that. The key to successful economic development is the continuous training of qualified personnel. The training of personnel for nuclear energy is especially difficult. At the moment, the problem is complicated by the quarantine conditions. At the special session, we will uh, present results uh, that uh, allow to overcome some difficulties in this uh, problem of online uh, learning. Okay, I wish to all participants of the conference the successful work, prosperity, and of course, good health. Thank you. My dear professor, uh, have a nice time in our conference. And uh, uh, next, I want to invite Dr. Professor Bart Borch, mm -hmm. Vice Rector of UID, Arctic University of Norway, but he has some technical uh, problems with uh, connection and he sent us a video and we will watch it right now please watch, watch. Uh, video watch. Watch. Yes. Dear friends, my name is Bort Bosk Mikkelsen. I am the Vice Rector at UIT, the Arctic University of Norway. Unfortunately, it's impossible for me to be a regular part of your eighth International Scientific Conference on Sustainability in Energy and Environmental Science. But it's a great pleasure for me to send you all a greeting from the Arctic. Just a few words on my <laughs> university, the Arctic University of Norway. It is the northernmost university in the world at 69 degrees north, far beyond the Arctic Circle, and also further north than Alaska and Siberia. Due to the Gulf Stream, however, we have relatively mild weather. But nowadays, the snow is arriving, and in one month, we go into two months without sun. And in the summertime, we have daylight 24-7 for two months. The, the Arctic University of Norway has 17,000 students and 3,500 employees on four campuses. We have 260 study programs and six faculties. And of course, what happens with the climate is crucial for the university as it is for the Arctic. 
The ice is melting in the Arctic Ocean and the average temperature on the Norwegian islands Pitcairn in the very high north has become three degrees higher during only a few decades. The people of the Arctic make small contributions to the global climate change, but stand to suffer disproportionately from the environmental disruptions that will likely accelerate in the years to come. Therefore, the need for sustainability in energy and environmental science is big and growing. These subjects are important for education and research at the Arctic, Arctic University of Norway, as it is for, and it's very satisfying that it's also so in Ukraine and worldwide. I have personally been to Ukraine many times for teaching. Therefore, I got Ukraine in my heart. And even though Frankis is, of course, one of my favorite cities, I really look forward to visiting Imamu once more. Till then, I wish you all a fruitful conference and a happy fall and winter in Ukraine or wherever you are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for nice video. I hope for further collaboration between our universities in future. We will continue, I hope. Uh, so, uh, next I would like to invite, it's a big honor for me to invite Mr. Michael uh, Reddin, Associated Professor, uh, School of Mathematic, uh, Mathematical Sciences, Rochester Institute of Technology, US, USA, United States of America. Please, no? Let's let's see. Maybe he will connect right now. No. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. We have a difference in uh, in time. Time. Yes. So he will connect us in half an hour because it's early morning right now in USA. So uh, next, I would like to invite uh, for my to make speech, Doctor Professor Bonja Pelli. The kind of Faculty of Business and Management Sciences, Malkepe University, Istanbul, Turkey. Hoş geldiniz. Hoş bulduk. Zdrasvite. Good afternoon, uh, dear my colleagues. Uh, uh, actually, before uh, I, I uh, start, I would like to uh, I would like to share. Uh, 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 that uh, to be a program member is, is an honor, and I would like to thank you, uh, the Ivana Frankivsk University, National University of Oil and Gas, for their kind invitation, and special thanks to uh, my colleague Oleg Yatsyuk and those uh, you uh, those who are uh, all contributed. So. Uh, I thought uh, this period of time, uh, it is better to talk about uh, the digital transformation and digital education, uh, which can uh, be the elements uh, uh, of some elements anyway, uh, of sustainability. Uh, because, uh, you know, COVID-19 has influenced every single person in the world and the most uh, affected sector is education after the health sector. So universities uh, also uh, get a large uh, portion of uh, this cake, uh, I can say. Um, so uh, I'm, uh, as uh, my colleague said, I'm the decan of the faculty of the uh, business and management science of Maltepe University. And, uh, and I am a multidisciplinary uh, academician. Actually, my main subject is marketing, but I'm just caring for, the, for these new things uh, in our lives. So that's why I, I'm, uh, I became a member of a kitchen uh, of the distance education uh, of uh, several universities uh, in Turkey. I also worked uh, on in front uh, desk uh, as uh, the 
faculty member. Uh, so uh, I would like to share some of uh, my thoughts about this. So um, uh, I can say uh, maybe uh, I should also talk a little bit uh, about myself because I'm more than 30 books uh, and chapters and more than 100 uh, articles in several journals in Turkish and English. So uh, here... Uh, uh, I want to share uh, a mind map, but I'm not sure about uh, if I can share uh, or not. I'm not sure. Uh, if Oleg can let me... Uh, yes. Or, uh, yes, 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 I will help you. Yes, please. Uh, 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 on the... Um, uh, Right on. Yes, yes. Right. Right. Uh, on the right corner, down the right corner, uh, to to start the presentation now. Okay. Okay. Uh, for all uh, for all screen full screen. Uh, well, okay, full. Okay, full scan. Full screen. Then. Uh, yes. Can you see my presentation right now? No, 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 please. Uh, 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 okay. Click, click on the screen, on the center of the screen. And, okay. Uh, and then click uh, send. Okay, can you see it right now? Uh, now I see you, but not your presentation. Not the presentation? No, no, no. Only you on the screen. Uh, maybe. Uh, uh, just again, uh, to start the presentation now, then, okay. click, then click on the uh, on the center of the screen. Okay. And send. Click on the button send. Blue button. Okay. No. Should it be the whole uh, one or? Okay, just a moment. Yes, I've seen it. Okay, great. Now I believe you can see my presentation yes, here. Yes, yes. yes. Okay, uh, the date is a little bit wrong, but anyway, here uh, you can see uh, you can see my mind map because I uh, I try to uh, uh, use mind map maps uh, during my works. And you can see the uh, digital transformation um, here. Uh, I would like to uh, make a definition uh, of digital transformation. Uh, it can be defined as a concept that includes the effects, processes, and applications of various technologies that bring people and machines closer and make life easier. So. Uh, it includes uh, changes that bring innovations and sometimes disruptive innovations to the lives of human beings. You can see here, uh, we are affecting a lot of things after the COVID-19. So uh, uh, you can uh, also, uh, 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 these uh, disruptive innovations sometimes uh, maybe uh, 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 these innovations uh, surrounding us, like nanotechnology, uh, 5G, driverless cars, smart cars, blockchain, and uh, some of them are really disruptive. But after uh, COVID-19, uh, we suddenly uh, entered this uh, digital transformation, which should have started 20 years ago. As Eva uh, stated, uh, we really we're not, uh, we really still uh, uh, not ready uh, to this kind of transformation. And the virus led uh, uh, to situations that we hadn't thought uh, of in many areas uh, where uh, we were not prepared. So business and governments uh, also have caught on. So uh, one of the areas most affected uh, by digital 
transformation is uh, just uh, the education. So schools, students, curricula, uh, institutions, as well as uh, different subjects from each other began to change. So while digital education and digital uh, transformation are topics uh, that complement each other. So uh, you can see the second my, uh, my second mind map about digital education and digital transformation here. And uh, you can see the certain changes in our lives. So this is only my map. Maybe if I can say you, uh, may, maybe something reminds you some other things. But uh, really, uh, uh, the systems are transforming. Teachers are uh, changing. Management is uh, differentiating. And the content uh, is really uh, different than ever. So, uh, COVID-19 situations led uh, to the realization of e-learning, like here we are ha having a webinar, uh, or uh, is e-learning is an effective way uh, of learning. So, uh, uh, so we we should consider all of these details uh, later on about uh, talking about sustainability. So uh, uh, we should think about uh, the dimensions uh, of it and uh, uh, we need to uh, think more about all of these issues I, I i don't want to be so long uh, about my presentation so um uh, in order to uh, keep with all these changes we must continue uh, to work effectively and efficiently while uh, putting end uh, of my words i wish you all success uh, on this uh, congress uh, and uh, i wish uh, all of us to success uh, to uh, to to uh, work walking in this new path so uh, I express uh, my uh, love and respect uh, to all of you. And finally, I thank you uh, very much uh, that all you listen to me. Uh, hope uh, to see you in, in, in the future con Congress or conferences. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, dear Professor Çoktuşkürdeyim. We invite you also to Ukraine, to our university for further collaboration. After maybe this COVID will finish, I think, sooner or later <laughs> it has to be. Thank you so much. So next uh, speaker I want to invite uh, for making his uh, greetings, uh, Dr. Professor Abdul Hakim Mamanazaro, Uzbekistan National University. Uzbekistan, please. Please open your. My переводчик не вылетел, да? Добрый день, дорогие коллеги. К сожалению, переводчица моя 
вылетела, поэтому позвольте мне э, поприветствовать на русском языке. Э, ну, я хотел, конечно, на родном, на русском языке выступить. Добрый день, дорогие дамы и господа, уважаемые участники международной конференции по устойчивости в энергетике и экологии. Я искренне рад приветствовать вас. И я уверен, что, несмотря на онлайн участие, в силу всем известных обстоятельств, данная ситуация не является препятствием для общения в области науки и образования. Вопреки критической ситуации, мы не теряем оптимизма, а наоборот находим новые инновационные и интерактивные способы, способствующие плодотворному взаимодействию, расширяя информационно-коммуникативные возможности. Международная научная конференция по устойчивому развитию энергетики охватывает научно-практические исследования в области энергетики и науки об окружающей среде раскрывая широкий спектр тем, связанных с устойчивостью энергетики и науки, науками об окружающей среде, являющихся научной платформой для ученых, для ученых и профессиональных инженеров со, со, всеми, со всего мира. Тем более, рассматриваемые вопросы и темы, такие как развитие возобновляемой умной и зеленой энергии, Устойчивое и эффективное использование природных ресурсов, восстановление окружающей среды, экологическая инженерия и экотехнология, сельское хозяйство и экологическая устойчивость, развитие зеленого предпринимательства, глобальные угрозы, последствия и смещение их последствий. Я думаю, очень актуальны и для Узбекистана, и для всего мира. Я здесь, Абдухакин Базарович. А, вы поверите, тогда э, вот переводчица появилась. Э, позвольте, если у нас регламент, регламент э, позволяет, я э, хотел бы на своем родном языке, конечно, выступить. Извините, э, можно? Э... Да, 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 конечно, пожалуйста, пожалуйста. У нас международная конференция. Да, так и должно быть. Ассаламу алейкум, онумлар, адамуглар. Умады, энергетики ва атрог мухыт бархарорлики бойча сакцизинчи халкаро инми конференция истрактары. Барчан гизне, бу татбирда көріп түргенімден. Багой ад, куртанна. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, dear participants of the 8th International Scientific Conference on Sustainability in energy and environmental science. I'm happy to welcome you. Ishonchim komilki, dunyoda hozirgi pandemiya sharoitiga qaramasdan bu holat fan va ta'lim sohasidagi aloqalarga to'siq bo'la olmaydi. Muhimi, biz ushbu vaziyatda ham samarali o'zaro aloqalarni rivojlantirish, axborot kommunikatsiya imkoniyatlarini kengaytiradigan yangi innovatsion I am convinced that despite online participation, due to all known circumstances, this situation is not for development in the field of science and education. In a critical situation in the world, we don't lose optimism, but find new, innovative and interactive opportunities that contribute to productive interaction expanding information and communication capabilities. Barqaror energetikani rivojlantirish bo'yicha xalqaro ilmiy konferensiya energetika va atrof muhit sohasidagi ilmiy va amaliy tadqiqotlarni qamrab oladi. Energiya energiya barqarorligi va atrof muhitga oid sohaga bog'liq ko'plab muammolarni ochib beradi. Dunyodagi olimlar va professional This conference covers scientific and practical research of energy 
and environmental science, reve revealing a wide range of topics related to sustainability in energy and environmental uh, sciences, related to a scientific platform for scientists and professional engineers from around the world. <laughs> Asli ve yaşlı enerjiler vardan tırış, tabii resurslardan karar ve samarali faydalanı, atraf muhitli silaj, atraf muhit muhandisliği ve ekologik teknoloji, kışlak kocalıkı ve ekologik barkararlık, yaşlı, yaşlı tadbirkarlıkları vardan tırış, global tahsitler, tabii ofat ve ularının akıbetlerini yumuşatış, bu Uzbekistan için hem, bütün dünya için hem, cüda muhum hep sorulayman. The number of issues and topics under consideration, such as development of renewable, smart and green energy, efficient use of national resources, environmental restoration, environmental engineering and eco-technology, as well as agriculture and environmental sustainability. Development of green entrepreneurship, global coal disaster, and me mitigation of their consequences. I think that uh, these topics are very relevant for the Uzbekistan and for the whole world. Ekologik muammalar yetiştirmekte. Ekoloji ve iklim uzgarışı muammaları türlü nüfuzlu halkara ve müntakavi tashkilatlar, muasseseler, forumlar ve samimiyetlerinin tüm tertibiye kirtilgenliği meclis imaz. In the modern world, people are faced with unprecedented scale and destructive environmental problems that threaten the very existence of all life on the planet. It's no coincidence that environmental issues and climate change are included in the agenda of various authoritative international and regional organizations, institutions, forums, and summits. <laughs> Hayatımızda şunda yangi muammalar payda bulmakta ki, bunlarını fakat bu ilmi asaslar ile hal kılış mümkün. For Uzbekistan, the most urgent issue is, of course, the problem of RLC. There are new visual effects on time, which are solved properly in a deep scientific justification. Ukrayna talim ve fan vazirliği, Ivana Frankovski, ve gaz milli teknikli üniversiteti tamamından teşkil edilgen bugünkü konferansı bu işlerini tatsın etmiş ve naşır etmiş, muhakeme kılış, fikir ve bilim almışış hem de gelecekte hamkarlık kılış için imkaniyatlarını yaratışa karatılgen. The conference organized by the Ministry of Education and Science of Ukraine and Ivana Frankov's Technical University of Oil and Gas aims to present and publish their work, discuss, ex discuss, exchange ideas and knowledge, and create a network for future cooperation. Hamkarlıkta işler, bizde ilmi, bilim der ufkını dengeltiriş, ilim fanını rivojlantiriş, türlü memleketler oğlumlarıge öz kabiliyetlerini namayış, ve kâşf etiş imkaniyatını deradı. Şançın kalmış ki, bu nüfuzlu tadbir, yani ki, e, yakşı muvaffaklaştırırken ve uyuşkaklık bilen icadi dostana ve işçiden muhitte ötadı. Bundan taşları, yalpı majlis ve sesiyelerde olumlarının birer bir maruzaları etibarsız kalması gibi amirmen. Hatır, her bir bölüm Rakamlı globallaşma şarayeti de her bir faaliyet sahasının muhum cihazlarını açıp veredigen özüge hak asasi sosyetlerge işler. 
Working in collaboration allows us to expand the horizon of scientific knowledge, developing and advancing science, providing an opportunity for scientists from different countries to show an irrelevant their ability. I am convinced that this prestigious event will be held in a well-coordinated and organized manner in creative, friendly, and working atmosphere. So I am convinced that uh, no report will be ignored at the plenary and breakout sessions, allowing scientists to devote their work. Each of the sessions uh, has its own key features that reveal the important aspect uh, of activity in the context of digital globalization. Bu online konferansiyada dünyanın ondan ortak mamlakatları vakilleri iştirak etmekte. Öyleyemem ki, atraf muhit ve barkarar rövajlanış muammaları bütün dünya hem cemiyetinin dikkat etibarıdır. Ve her bir mamlakat vakili dolsar muammanın ilmi her etiş yollarını topadı. 8-ci halkarar ikli konferansiyanın barca maruzatçıları ve iştirakçıları gene bir bir bor sat salamatli muvaffakiyet ve acayip iş keyfiyatını dileyim. This online conference is attended by representatives of 10 countries. I believe that environmental and sustainable development issues cover the entire globe. And each of the representatives find the ways of scientific solution to the origin problem. I wish all speakers and participants the implementation of creative plans, excellent mood, fruitful work, success in scientific and work activities. I hope that each of us during this period will obtain the most necessary, important and uh, important information. I wish all speakers and participants of the 8th International Scientific Conference uh, health, success and great working mood. Teknik, teknik e, sebepler okubatı da yüzeye gelgen e, hatalıklar yok ki kamçılıklar için uzun soruyum ben ve karşı ingizge etibar için katta rahmet. Thank you for your attention and uh, so my apology for my lateness and for uh, technical problems. Thank you very much. Oh. Thank you so much for your kind words, good wishes and uh, greetings for our conference. Everything is okay. Have a nice day. Thank you so much, dear professor. So uh, right now I have information that we have connection with United States of America. So I want to invite uh, the professor of School of Mathematical Sciences, Rochester Institute of Technologies, Mr. Michael Redding. Please, if it is possible, I, I have got information that he is just connected. Yes. Please switch on your microphone. Dear Michael, please switch on your microphone. There we go. I got it. Okay, oh, great. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, it? Okay, so first of all, I'd like to thank uh, my colleagues Sergei Gushko and Irina Maksimova for introducing me to Ivana Frankovsk uh, Institute of Technology. I've had the honor of knowing them for about two years from uh, Resigna conferences in Latvia. And of course, I would like to thank um, uh, Ina Hvostina and uh, Oleg for in personally inviting me to this conference and for letting me be a new kid on the block. Um, so let me um, turn on my share screening. I'm going to begin with the presentation. So in a, in a short period of time, I decided to um, uh, discuss uh, how to function within limited resources and utilize resources efficiently 
Uh, due to COVID, I'm sure all of us have experienced uh, cuts and limited resources um, due to finance, especially financial constraints. So it's our task to do our best to function as best as we can um, in limited uh, resources. Uh, first of all, why do natural or why naturally uh, do we have a problem with limited resources? Even prior to COVID, we've had a lot of these issues to deal with. After COVID existence, of course, these problems uh, per, got worse and worse. Um, but we need to stay ahead of the game and do our best to function um, within limited resources. First of all, uh, financial constraints are always a problem, regardless is it COVID or prime COVID. Um, time constraints have become a bigger problem due to COVID uh, because we have uh, higher teaching loads, we have more work for the university. Uh, so that's been, I would say, a substantially bigger challenge versus the financial constraints and not having enough uh, computer equipment uh, as we're teaching online, especially our students uh, have a lack of it. And still, we need our best uh, to function within um, these problems because we can't tell our students, well, go buy a new computer, go buy a scanner. That's completely out of the question. Uh, lack of experiences also can uh, become a problem uh, with limited resources and um, our lack of confidence, fear of risk and failure, that can become also a limited resource. And of course, prior to COVID, lack of support from our colleagues and um, our administrators, but that should never um, be a reason why we need to stop doing what we're uh, doing. So our task is how to start handling these um, challenges. So financial uh, constraints, uh, how, and it's not a question, does a problem exist? It's a question, how do we actually function within uh, the financial um, constraints? Uh, for instance, um, I, I would love to attend 20 conferences a year. Well, maybe six out of the 20, I can definitely do, prioritize some of the conferences, and now we have opportunities to uh, participate remotely. Um, I have colleagues in, from different countries. I would love to travel more frequently to collaborate, but now due to Skype or Google Chats, Zoom, and others, no, not a problem. I can easily communicate with them remotely. Um, also, instead of purchasing licenses for Zoom, for BlueJeans, uh, we have tons of uh, free software such as um, Google Chats, Facebook, that I use numerous number of times with my students, with my colleagues, and also a lot of free software such as LaTeX, Desmos. Being a textbook writer, I use these all the time. I've never asked for licenses from my university uh, because I can perfectly find um, function without them. Also, uh, plan trips when conference dates are close to each other, when I spend time in Latvia on my sabbatical and in summertime, easily I attend about six or seven conferences. You only pay for one airfare uh, and only pay minimal uh, registration fees. And of course, accumulate frequent flyer miles in America. It's a really great uh, program. I'm sure it exists uh, all over uh, the world as well. Um, time constraints, of course, due to heavy teaching loads um, and committee work we have at universities, that definitely prevents me from doing as much research as I want, but still we want to maximize um, our pr pr production time, still write papers, still write textbooks, so that should not stop us from achieving our, our goals. Um, well. When we have lots of conferences to present, I'm sure we may think, okay, well, I don't have time for this, but if you think carefully, you can always recycle your previous presentations and build new ones based on the old ones, which I do all the time. Uh, for instance, one of the ways I've uh, gained time, ask my supervisors if I can teach the same course several consecutive semesters, so that cuts down the preparation uh, time, especially now in COVID, this is really pertinent because preparing for a class online versus preparing for an institutional class, that's really a huge, we're talking about just 
sometimes not hours, but days or weeks of time, of more time that we need to uh, prepare. And also we want to prioritize our uh, time. Uh, just like we prioritize money, we want to prioritize time. So we want to think of activities. Do we really want to watch television shows all the time or social gatherings when we should be utilizing that time to be writing papers and books? So this is where emotional intelligence needs to be applied uh, of prioritizing. Um, one of the problems, of course, when you switch to online, uh, that everything takes much longer, especially to grade students' homework assignments and tests. So if we think beyond our scope, we can definitely uh, find methods to grade homework assignments faster and grade tests uh, faster. One of the ways, for instance, I asked the best students if I could share their solutions with other students. Luckily, there's not been a single instance where any of them have said no. And that has really increased uh, the speed at which I grade uh, homework assignments and uh, tests. And as we mentioned with um, money, time also when you, instead of taking several trips, especially for me crossing the Atlantic, why cross the Atlantic five times when I do it once and uh, attend several conferences and seminars all in one uh, trip, which uh, the last decade I've been doing uh, quite frequently. Um, outdated equipment and unavailable equipment. I'm sure your students have wrote you several emails. Well, I don't have access to a scanner. I got an old computer. Well, telling them go buy a new computer, go and buy a new scanner is completely out of the question. So we have to uh, so we may afford to buy new equipment. However, our students who are participating in the online course, especially in my institute, we have students from all over the planet. Uh, we've had students from United Arab Emirates, uh, from South Africa, from China, who are taking my online classes. This is definitely something I cannot tell them uh, to do. Still, some way, uh, there's a will, there's a way. Uh, I have to find a way how to accommodate. Uh, these students who don't have recent scanners, who don't have recent computers, who are still using, for example, Windows XP uh, computers um, that's been outdated for 10 years. Still, you can find software, versions of softwares that still is compatible with their uh, computers. So first of all, there are older versions of Microsoft. There are still older versions of uh, software that could be used in older uh, computers. So one of the ways I deal with the problem when I have students tell me I don't have access to a scanner or their scanner produces a file that's 40 megabytes in size uh, that they can't send by email, just use very primitive technology. They all have cameras, cell phones, just photograph it, put it in the Word file and send it to me. And through share screening, I've instructed students on how to resolve the problem because this is, I'm sure this is a problem that a lot of us have faced recently while teaching online uh, courses. And you can, even from cellular, from primitive old cell phones, you can produce a PDF file from a photograph. Um, also, instead of buying a new computer, uh, you can buy a Logitech camera and you can attach it to a computer if a computer has no camera. I've had an old computer with no camera and I've used it um, and I still use it to this day. And of course, we have free upgrades of Windows and regular maintenance. So this I've used very recently to resolve problems with students who don't have access to these um, uh, recent uh, te uh, technological advances that we may have access to. Okay, um, lack of experience. So uh, going beyond our comfort zone. So what is our comfort zone and going beyond our comfort zones? Um, so first of all, we need to be realistic of our experiences. Uh, we have to assess, is it worth uh, taking a risk or not? And this is where we wanna think, okay, maybe we should consult with more experienced colleagues, let them be our guides, and then do to them, gain new experiences, which I've done numerous times the last uh, two decades I've been in academia. And also just because we're inexperienced doesn't mean that we should stay in our comfort zone. It's time to actually gain new experiences, which most likely are going to extend from our previous experiences. So it's not something completely new because we want to think again past our scopes. Okay, what have we done similar to this from which we can expand? Um, and 
we can't be afraid to make mistakes. Most of our colleagues are uh, very forgiving as long as we're learning from our mistakes and we're flexible to feedback and constructive criticisms. So this is especially the American way of gaining new uh, experiences. Um, so for instance, I lo love nature. I do a lot of uh, mountain climbing. So this is my comfort zone, but then this is gonna be beyond my comfort zone where I have higher altitudes, where I have um, s snow covered instead of green uh, scenery and winds avalanches but still i want to accomplish my task and get to these destinations but of course there are challenges and risks that are involved and uh, in our professions we face them all the time and should that stop us from achieving our goals so those are the questions fundamental questions we want to be asking ourselves now i'm sure this has been a really serious problem for many of us way before COVID, and now because of COVID, i'm sure this problem has proliferated and got a lot worse, where we have lack of support from our colleagues and our, from our administrators and supervisors. Again, we wanna ask the question, if you have a goal, do you wanna let them stop you from achieving your goal? So these are the common problems we face with all the time. And now, of course, these problems are more and more challenging due to uh, COVID. First of all, if your supervisor or administrator says no, you should never interpret it as an absolute no, but as a relative no. What do we mean by, by a relative no instead of an absolute no? First step you wanna to try to do is suggest alternative ideas. Um, that's going to convince your supervisor to reduce the cost and risk because a lot of times they may have lack of experience, lack of confidence, they're afraid of risks, they're afraid of costs, especially our administrators. If I make a mistake, they're going to be the ones responsible for it. So that could be a reason why they may not let uh, me perform a certain task. Um, always look for alternative ideas and suggest your idea to uh, others. Because if a resource is unavailable, there's, there are alternative ideas and resources. It's a question of you finding it, not a question whether they exist or not. If you have an idea that completely fails, you want to understand why. Uh, that failed and transition to new ideas. So again, this is where risk management and emotional intelligence comes into the picture where you're assessing your mistakes and failures to uh, prevent them from happening uh, next time. And I'm sure a lot of you probably know the American actor Chuck Norris. He often says it is better to have tried and failed than not have tried at all. I'm certainly a big believer and supporter of this. And I've experienced that in my life quite many uh, times. Um, so for instance, just because you see road closed, should that stop you from getting to your destination? No, you just look at a road map. So for instance, instead of taking the highway from San Francisco to San Diego in California, you can take the coastal route, which is really beautiful, which I've done many times, or you could take the route through the mountains. Uh, and uh, it's going to take longer to get from San Francisco to San Diego. However, the scenery is beautiful. A lot of times, alternate uh, ideas lead to more ideas that you would never see otherwise if you would have done uh, your original uh, idea. Again, I've experienced this dozens of times uh, throughout uh, my life. And um, mistakes, it may seem unrealistic, a lot of times do lead to uh, future innovations and ideas. Sometimes it is helpful to make mistakes. If you make a wrong turn as you're driving, you discover beautiful scenery by accident, again, which I personally have, have happened many times uh, throughout my life. Um, and don't let others stop you from doing what you want to do or achieve what you want to do. There is a will, there is a way, um, as we say in America. So, for instance, the Atlantic Ocean, the Baltic Sea, which I photograph and write poems about all the time, it never sleeps. It always inspires me with its marine energy. The Rocky Mountains in America, this is a continental divide that um, separates the flow of rivers either in the Atlantic Ocean or Pacific Ocean. Winds never sleep. They're always inspiring me with alpine energy every time I uh, see it. 
Now, what I'd like to, instead of discussing problems and how to handle problems, the next step, how to provide somebody a convincing argument to get resources, or basically you're selling your idea to somebody. In America, we have an expression when somebody doesn't agree with me or doesn't like it, they say, I'm not buying it. So I'm sure a lot of you have heard this um, expression. So now in that, uh, based on that sentence, how do you sell the idea so they do buy your story or they do buy your argument, even though it may have no financial meaning uh, whatsoever? Uh, first of all, what is unique about your idea in comparison to others? Because nobody wants to support an idea that's not original or copy of somebody else's idea. That's a very frequent reason why ideas don't get rejected. Also, I want to convince my administrators and my students how they're going to benefit from the idea. So when I have a new pedagogical innovation, that those are the first questions my supervisors, my department chair, and my dean ask me, which I've experienced the last uh, two uh, decades. So why should they approve it? Uh, because again, um, them approving my idea is a risk on their behalf because they are responsible if anything goes wrong. So that's, we have to keep in mind of our, where our supervisors stand because they're taking a risk if they're by supporting your idea. So you wanna convince them that there's very minimal risk. Um, and of course, how is your idea better than others? Again, they don't want you copying somebody else's ideas. And as we mentioned, we wanna convince them that there's a minimal risk of failure and loss of resources and money. Because if I make a mistake, not only they're responsible for it, but it could cost them money and loss of resources. So those are the things we want to keep in mind when we talk to our supervisors. And of course, most important of all, be flexible to negotiate because um, not likely that they're going to accept your ideas 100%. They're not, not likely they're going to tell me, Mike, this is great, go ahead with it. They're going to ask questions and going to have skepticisms and sometimes they would not let me fulfill my uh, company idea but they suggested okay would you consider doing this instead so we want to be flexible and negotiate and understand why they're suggesting a certain idea and it's helpful to actually try something new beyond your comfort zone because there's a most likely there's going to be a good reason why they're suggesting a particular alternative so at least you want to be fair to them and try to understand why they're suggesting uh, that idea. And perhaps this could be a new opportunity because this I have happened many times. I wanted one thing, I got another thing. So in real life, uh, if, you, if, you, if you love to drive Mercedes and somebody offers you to drive a Volvo instead, it may not be a bad uh, choice uh, after all. So in conclusion, um, I'd like to share some successful experiences on actually selling uh, my new ideas, even though I've had invitations to write textbooks, but I went past my scope. So recently I published a textbook on introduction to recognition and deciphering of patterns. Um, this idea um, just popped up naturally after I taught my uh, mini course at Resigna uh, Technical Academy for the high school students. I was invited to do that and I figured, okay, well, if I'm doing it, let's write a textbook on this, which I've had ideas for quite a while. So you have to fill out proposals. So basically, again, you're selling your unique traits and selling features of your book. They're gonna ask you um, how many competitive textbooks exist already. Uh, what are the problems with those? So how are you gonna be better than them? And how are you gonna be different uh, than them? And who is your audience? Um, and recently, and right, and currently, I'd like to share with everyone, I'm actually in process of filling out a new proposal because after being a new kid in the block of teaching online in less than a year, I decided to write a book about it because I just enjoyed it so much. This is another thing that I've never thought of doing if somebody asked me um, a year ago, Mike, would you like to teach online classes? I would have said out of the question. Um, and then because we were forced to do it, then we gained new experiences, and this is something I never thought of doing that welcomed me into the new world. I actually don't even, for the next uh, long period, I don't even want to go back to teaching in the regular classroom. I like teaching online so much because I've gained so many new experiences in such a short period of time where I'm ready to actually write such a, a book. And 
This is uh, the front cover of um, my book with CRC Press. It's been a really great publishing company to work with. Uh, the editors are very flexible and also they're not going to necessarily let you uh, construct a book on everything you like. They're going to say, okay, uh, perhaps you want to expand on this. And this is what I'm currently doing in process negotiating with my editor. What topics are okay, what topics are not okay. Uh, he's suggesting to introduce new topics that I never uh, thought of. And again, it's to my benefit to be flexible to him and understand why uh, he and I totally agree with him. He's been really great uh, to work with. And in conclusion, um, since uh, we're dealing with ecology, I, a year ago I published my first book on poetic landscape photography where um, it has my photographs and poems about nature, so predominantly about uh, the marine and alpine scenery which I spent uh, time um, with. And in conclusion, I'd like to share a quote from uh, Captain James Cook who often says, not only go further than anyone has gone before, but as far possible for man to go. When he discovered Australia and New Zealand, he came up with this uh, quote. I feel this is very inspiring. That motivates me to achieve more tasks and take more challenges. And again, I'd like to thank all of you for giving me an opportunity to be a new kid on the block in these uh, in this conferences and uh, to be uh, and to experience new adventures and new um, ideas from uh, this conference as well. So hope this is going to be one out of many of these conferences. And again, uh, I'd like to thank all, all of you for uh, giving me opportunity to be here. Thank you so much, dear professor, for your really actual information very interesting for all of us i think for all participants <laughs> in universities especially thank you thank you so much so, uh yes and the next our uh, participant i want to invite uh, Dr. professor darius pavlish head of gramatica commune office of poland please So, Professor, dear Professor Nariush Pavlish, are you here? Dear Darius, uh, please uh, switch on your microphone. Pan uh, Darius, please the microphone, please. Yes, Pan Доброго дня, Дарій Павлиш, міський голова громади громадка біла німецького кордону. Як один українець в Польщі, я є, я є міський головою, я є доктор економічних наук, також читаю лекції на польських та на українських вузах в сьогоднішній конференції. Зі мною з Польщі бере участь професор Марчин Кенси з Бидгоського університету. Я хочу сказати, що ми є винятковою громадою, де в протягом 18 років ми стали одною з найбагатших громад в Польщі. Ми перейшли певну трансформацію, де використали максимум з Євросоюзу грошей. І сьогодні хочу в презентації, котра за секунду буде переказана в слайдах, показати, що від людини залежить в великій мірі майбутнє. Так що дуже прошу про слайди. Добре, але тільки робіть паузу. Через два-три речення ми будемо давати перегляд. Добре, ми йдемо по колеї. Так, так що... Так що, 
Tak się chcę pokazać, jak my przeszli transformację, jak wyglądała gromada i region, a jak się oni wygląda je, dzięki temu, że my pozyskali wielkie groszy i stali jedną z najsilniejszych gromad. Na dzisiaj my jako gromada mamy swój Uniwersytet trzeciego wieku, także w ramach programu organizujemy stażowania dla ukraińskich studentów i wykładaczy. Co rok organizujemy letnie szkoły dla studentów, dla szkół średnich i to muszę chodzi, chcę pokazać, w jak wielkiej mierze zależy najbudnie na, naszego regionu, naszych miast, naszej dzierżawy. Oleg, możemy opuszczać? E, tak, ale bądź łaska, robić pauzę, dla tego, żeby my je dawali kolego na angielską mowę. Dobra. Dobrze, da, zaczynamy. Dobra. Тоді починайте і буквально три речення і Добре. Добре? Добра, добра. Так що хочу вам, хочу вам показати сьогодні, як власне в великій мірі залежить майбутнє наших держав. So today I would like to show you how the future of our countries and what it will be. My w przeciągu 18 lat udaje mi, ja jestem miejskim głowowoju, mero z najbiedniejszej gromady zrobili jedną z najbogatszych gromad w Polsce. Uh, as a mayor of one of the poorest uh, communities in the Poland, uh, I've managed to create one of the richest uh, communities in the Poland. Jako ewenement piatotysiaczna gromada mamy infrastrukturę porównalną do miasta Kijów. Uh, our community that counts 5000 people uh, have the infra has the infrastructure of uh, tak, of of that infrastructure tak, that can be compared to Kyiv. My stworzyli na e, e, aeroporty, które został po wojskach radiańskich w 93 roku e, wielką zonę. So we created the airport uh, that was uh, Built by the Soviet government. And now, and now, the whole world has been able to bring to the table companies that are giving thousands, hundreds of thousands of jobs to Ukrainians and Poles and all those who came here for the sake of earning money. Also, we created a lot of enterprises uh, that uh, give the opportunity for. Uh, Polish people and as well as uh, the foreigners to work in Poland. Odna firma przykładna pana Toni przyniała 4,5 tysiąca Ukraińców, którzy znaleźli swoje miejsce w naszej gromadzie. One of the companies, for example, Panatoni, uh, gave 3,000 uh, working places for Ukrainians in our country. Wielką wagę przywiązujemy do infrastruktury i do tego, co w naszym mieszkańcom z dnia na dzień, z tygodnia na tydzień, z roku na rok żyło się coraz krasze. Uh, we pay a lot of attention to for the infrastructure, so our citizens uh, can live uh, better and better from day to day, from year to year. I to my dla ludzi starszych, którzy już na pensji, my zorganizowali w naszej gromadzie Uniwersytet trzeciego wieku. And for the older people, uh, we created uh, the University of uh, Third Age. Który, który wyciągnął wszystkich starszych ludzi z domu i zagospodarował ich wielkie talenty. Uh, so this university deals with the older people, so they uh, would come from their homes and uh, uh, put into work their talents. I to mu chcę dzisiaj pokazać w prezentacji, jak wygląda świat w naszym regionie, w naszej gromadzie, a jak wygląda teper. So now I want to show you uh, the environment as it was and environment as it is now. Co rok my przyjmujemy studentów z ukraińskich uniwersytetów. Uh, each and every year we invite uh, students from Ukraine. Organizujemy stażowania bezkosztowne dla studentów i wykładaczy. Also we organize uh, training uh, for the students and also teachers. 
a tak koszt zimowy ta litni szkoły spilno z profesorem Marciną Kęsym, ta profesor Anetą Józielińską. Uh, also we create uh, winter and uh, summer schools with the aforementioned professors. I tak koszt dum ma już opośrodnić się konferencji, tak koszt będą mał przyjemnie z nawiązate współpracy z uczestnikami i będziemy mogli na najbutnie współpracować i przynimać was i waszych studentów na stażowaniu w naszych gromadzie. Uh, also after this conference I uh, have very high hopes uh, for the fruitful cooperation with the universities and uh, for uh, all of you to come and visit our my, my je gromadą ją wołyko sukcesu, to mu, co my maksymalno wykorzystali euro, euro, z euro, Eurosojuzu groszy, zainwestowali w infrastrukturę i to mu my mamy multum podpiemstw, które dają wołyki podatki. Mm, uh, as for our community, we effectively used uh, the money that the European Union gave us, so uh, the community became bigger and uh, we created a lot of uh, enterprises and uh, work. I to mu przejdziemy do prezentacji, pokażemy jak wyglądał i tam będzie jeden duży ciekawy slajd przepaść, która będzie pokazywała czarny świt, a że świt, w którym mu świty słońca. Uh, so now I want to show you the presentation which will deal with the world that once was full of darkness and now it's full of sunlight. Przechodzimy do prezentacji, Oleg. Okay. We will switch to the presentation. Mamy Macie Nie. Aha. Tu, tu, je, tu jest slajd, który pokazuje, że Rika Nikolę nie pływa, nie pływa do zadu, to mu życia tak musi każdego dnia iść do przodu i nie winno nam głowę odkrywać do, do zadniej starinku. Uh, so this picture shows uh, the proverb that uh, the river uh, is never going backwards. So we should live uh, as this river. Uh, we uh, should not look backwards for what works. We really have to think of something that will be in the future. Tak jest, na następnych slajdach mamy pokazany 97 rig, wyłyka woda, takoż e, ruka ludzi, które, które przyczyniły się do tego, że one były przez roki regulowane wody. So, uh, there are the pictures of uh, the big flood that happened in, 90, uh, in 1997. Uh, so, uh, as you can see, the people uh, Oh, some people they, they couldn't uh, tak jest, na, that, yeah. Następne slajdy mają mu pokazane jak ludy nedbali perez pe, za sredowisze i wyszmariali śmietnia wśude. So this is the this uh, littering problem as it uh, was pre previously in the phone. Tak jest, tu mają pokazane komunalne wody, które spływały do 15 roku temu jeszcze do RIG. So this is uh, as you can see the waste that was going into the rivers. Dalsze pokazane jak jak ryby poczuwały się w tej wodzie. So this uh, is basically what happened to the fish after those uh, sewer waters came into river. Dalsze mają mu pokazane gospodarku lisami, jak wytywnali bezmyślni lisy, żeby tylko pozyskać ten materiał. And so, and this what happened to the forest so when people just tried to get the material from it. Takoż wielki, wielki wogon, który takoż przyczynany jest ludzką ruką. And so the fire that was created by the mankind. Tak, wygl dalszy wy tak wyglądał e, poranok, kiedy ludzie wstawali, fabryka, która w naszym regionie dawała tyle dymów w powietrze. 
this uh, was the moment when uh, the, the factory uh, in the morning, right, when people just uh, could uh, see what it is and how much uh, smoke it produces. I tu na wstupnym slajdzie mamy pokazane, jak wyglądała zwierzyna, która w tym w to seredowie jeszcze żyła. This what happened to the uh, animals that lived in such an environment. Tak jest, pokazane na wstupnym jest slajd, gdzie zupełniali się lody i jak po sobie zistawlali ślady. And this basically the, is the footprint of the people that uh, were having a great time uh, outdoors, but left later. To my mother, she got her night at the hotel. Ludy wyjeżdżali z przyjemst. Samochody, które, które zabijali powietrze. And this, as you can see, is the rush hour and so the cars that produces uh, that are producing greenhouse effect. I teper idemo veliki vohoň, zhorila velika škola, takož pričina ludzka ruka. And so this is the picture of uh, the burning that, ha that happened in school, the big fire. I i następny slajd mamy pokazane w jakich pecach ogrywali ludy domy, sali i z kilki ryczej szło w powietrze. And uh, this is the picture of uh, heating equipment so people can uh, be warm, right? And as you can see a lot of uh, materials and a lot of uh, smoke was uh, uh, ejected into the air. I tu mamy slajd, kiedy ja począł e, uriad e, miską głowy, 2002 rok, wielka przepaść, gdzie począł ja inwestować w odnawialne zerła, e, to jest powietrze, to jest słońce, to jest woda. And uh, this is the beginning of uh, my investment into the renewable sources of energy, such as Uh, water, air and uh, sunlight. In to mają to pokazane elektrowni wodne, które dają czystą energię, elektrowni fotowoltaiki i dalsze pokazane lis, który, który do niedawna, który do niedawna był, po, był straszny i miał bardzo e, niepotrzebnych liczeń. Uh, as you can see, uh, there were uh, hydroelectric stations, uh, wind turbines, and uh, this is the forest that not so long ago was devastated by humankind, and now it's renovated. Takoż mamy pokazane, że angażuje młodzieżkę z średnich do początkowych szkół, po to, żeby dbale pro średniowyższe. Also, we try to teach the youth uh, from schools to uh, take care of our environment. Wprowadzili my segregację smitej, zainwestowali w odpowiednie programy, żeby mogli my wrze przerobić smitja segregowane. Uh, also, we introduced the segregation of litre and invested in uh, different programs, so it could be very effective. Takoż na następnym slajdzie mamy pokazane przedsiębiorstwo, które przerabia komunalne wody. Uh, so this is the enterprise that uh, recycles the communal uh, sewer waters. I cudowny majdanczyk dla dzieci w naszym parku. Uh, and a magnificent playground in our local park. Tu mamy na następnym slajdzie to turiku, w której ryby że pomerły, a, te, a tu mamy wodę czystą jak zerkało, a w niej zwierzynę. And as you can see, now the water is uh, crystal clear, so there are a lot of fish and so the animals are living in peace. Na następnych slajdach mamy pokazane elementy fotowoltaiki, która ogrywa je domy z wielkich programów, dali my możliwość, majże z 95 dofinansowania mont, montowania dla, na, na, dla ludzi w, w każdym domu. And uh, this is the equipment that is used in the heating program, so each and every family can have a, a warm house. 
Також монтують в ПЕЦ п'ятої генерації, то є наступний слайд, який вже є ПЕЦом майже світової слави. As you can see, this is the furnace of the fifth generation that is worldwide. Tu następne dwa slajdy mają pokazane misja, gdzie były z maszyn kolesa, a сьогодні lis i miejsce, gdzie zupełniają się ludy, wyglądają tak. And now uh, on these two, two slides you can see the renovated forest so with the recreational zones. My zainwestowali takoż w misja, gdzie ludzie mogą zdawać e, niepotrzebne rzeczy, szkło i plastik. To następne, gdzie jako ewenementy z europejskiej e, miry, my je takim priorytetem, który pokazuje, że można e, zagospodarować szkło i plastik. Uh, also, as you can see, those are the programs for recycling plastic and uh, uh, glass. And uh, this actually is the part of the program and the priority program that we introduced in uh, our country. Następne slajdy mają pokazaną samą segregację smitej, jak wydobywają się na taśmi, co w majże w 60% my wyzyskujemy ryczy, które idą do ponownego perorobu. And uh, as you can see, this is the picture of uh, segregation process uh, that those materials are going to be uh, recycled in the future. Następne slajdy pokazujemy, jak angażujemy szkoły nasze do sadzenia lisiu. I tu mamy może na następnym slajdzie trzy litni duby. Uh, and so this is how our youth is engaged into the renovation process of uh, the renovation process for forest. I na co chodzi w naszych lisach, w naszym regionie mamy z Wirynu, tam na następnych slajdach jest zrobione, zrobione znimki, już z misja, ciadę pokazane, jak poczuwają się, jak poczuwają się z Wiryna w naszym regionie. And so those are the pictures, uh, new, newly made pictures of uh, the animals that are peacefully living in uh, our environment. Pokazane jest, jak wschodzi słońce, gdzie na poprzednich, gdzie była przepaść, było czarno, a tu już mamy słońce, mamy czyste powietrze. And as you can see, there are a lot of sunlight, we have crystal uh, clear uh, air, that everyone can uh, clearly breathe. I na mod to, 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 tej prezentacji jest takie, że zawsze będzie krajszy dzień, ale ten krajszy dzień w wielkiej mierze zależy od samych nas. And so this is the motto of this presentation, that tomorrow it will be a better day, but this day depends totally on ourselves. To, to mów w, w czasie wielkiej pandemii, w czasie wielkiej e, e, niespotykanej sytuacji, duma już, że jak będzie najbudnie w wielkiej mierze zależeć od nas. And in the times of pandemic, in times of COVID-19, the future day depends really on us. I to mu duma już o następną, że konferencja odbudę się, że w sali konferencyjnej nie będziemy przewodzić online. So I think that the next conference will be presential one. A ja, a ja wszystkich zaproszę do naszej gromady biła niemieckiego kordonu i będę mnie i dużo miło przyjmować was wszystkich i żebyśmy mogli przewodzić te stażowania, te zimowe, te letnie szkoły. So I invite you to visit our community, that, uh, uh, the location of which is near German border, so we can create uh, new uh, practice programs and uh, as well as uh, winter and summer schools. Na zakończenie obrażają wam wszystkim w tu dużą ciężką chwilę duże zdrowia, obrażają wam szczęścia i żebyśmy mogli wspólnie realizować wielkie programy dla dobra majbutnych pokoleń. Uh, and uh, in the conclusion, I want uh, to thank all of you and to wish all of you uh, health, happiness and uh, so all of us can co cooperate together.
Tak jest, także do pobaczenia. Duże dziękuję, że ja mam mich wziąty uczyć w dzisiejszej konferencji. E, słowami słowa Ukraini praszczają i kiczają w dzisiejszą prezentację. Uh, I want to again thank all of you uh, for this uh, opportunity that you gave me to participate in the conference and uh, the final words are glory to Ukraine. So thank you again. Thank you. And thank you so much, dear professor, for sharing your uh, really great practice uh, experience in providing uh, sustainability in uh, regions, in regions, and you show us very nice results. I think it will give much hope for all of us <laughs> in future. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, and next, I want to invite our next speaker, our uh, Permanent, permanent, uh, permanent participant of our of our previous conferences, uh, Doctor Professor Giuseppe T. Cirella, please. So let me introduce myself. First of all, uh, my name is Giuseppe Cirella, and uh, I was at the last year's uh, eighth international scientific conference in uh, Ivana Franceschi. It's uh, wonderful to see everybody here, um, some old faces, a few new ones. Uh, the conference is um, on sustainability and energy and environmental science. Um, I have a few things that I'd like to talk about. Um, my presentation, I'm not sure I can get it on at the moment, but um, I work at the University of Gdańsk in uh, Poland, in the north. Um, I work in the Faculty of Economics, and I, I teach a number of uh, different uh, fields. Um, in economics, I teach the um, Executive MBA program, uh, Sustainable Development at Masters. Um, and doctorate level. I also have some practical path uh, research, which I uh, spend with undergrads. Um, I'm a human geographer, but I also uh, do a lot of environmental science and um, related uh, studies. I also deal uh, with a lot of political science um, research, and that's on my economic. And that's my um, uh, university side of uh, of the picture. Um, I'm also a director at the Polo Center of Sustainability in Italy. Uh, we deal with a lot of um, multidisciplinary research. Um, some of the key stuff we deal with is uh, sustainability and um, the um, uh, subsidiary uh, concepts of, of governance and, and globalization, consumption issues. Uh, a lot of issues, uh, the, the last year I was speaking about indices um, I've been spending a lot of time working on ecosystem services and urban sustainability, and to that extent also things like green uh, infrastructure. Um, I've spent a lot of time working in, uh, the, in the developing world, in Africa, Asia, and even in Latin America. Um, obviously, the issue of global health is quite uh, important as it uh, is a contemporary issue with COVID. Um, the environment and interdisciplinary societal studies are something else that we deal with. Um, the research is basically an acute understanding of societal changes, um, both from human and non-human uh, perspectives. Um, it's, uh, our developments in these areas uh, help us apply unique solutions uh, in the fields for diverse, uh, as diverse as uh, social sciences, engineering, and physical sciences even the biological sciences, uh, sciences, and to some degree even in, in humanities when we look at ethics and, and philosophy. Um, since we're dealing with energy and environmental science, I wanted to uh, talk to you about two papers which um, are, I've recently published. Um, the first paper is in El Vizier's um, uh, Extractive Industries and Society, uh, Extractive Industries and Society, and um, it touches home because it's actually a household natural gas consumption uh, paper in Ukraine. I uh, published it with the International Humanitarian University in Odessa. 
and, there, and it was a report that basically looked at the reflections of the government of Ukraine and the implementation of tax on household consumption of the natural gas um, that uh, is being laid out in the country. Um, so basically what it came down to is law-abiding taxpayers who earn um, a mid-level salary are mostly disadvantaged by what is referred to as the gas tax. So obviously the Ukrainians will know exactly what I'm talking about. And the gas tax um, has significantly increased um, the inflation. It's reduced domestic consumption. It's reduced profitability of local businesses. It's reduced the size of the middle class and it's increased stratification of the society itself. It's concealed real income and escalated the shadow economy to some degree and enhanced injustice and an out migration of labor. And I, I, as I live in Poland, you know, there's about two, I mean, it's registered at 2 million Ukrainians living in Poland, but it's probably double. So there's a legitimate case to uh, reconsider some of the gas, uh, gas tax um, that has been uh, that has been sort of like a, a burden on the on the economy and on the country's households. There are obviously some ethical problems with the uh, with the uh, growth of uh, cost inflation, and to date, uh, the austerity measures from the IMF into the Ukraine. Um, maintain pressure and usage um, of the gas tax so that it remains, and that's a key that's a, um, a, a key element of the trench renewal. Obviously, um, with the new government and the new uh, president Zelensky being elected this year, um, the alternative will obviously look at uh, further devastation of the middle class and the limitation of growth and entrepreneurial uh, opportunity um, to the entirety of the Ukrainian economy. I'm going to switch gears a bit and look at um, another paper which was uh, published in Frontiers of Energy Research. And obviously, because I work at the University of Gdansk, we uh, are a port city. We have the Baltic Sea. Um, and when I was in Odessa, obviously, it's the Black Sea. So I've been doing a lot of uh, transport information or transport uh, um, research and um, a second paper which I looked at was decarbonization of maritime transport and we looked at external costs it's a very interesting um, uh, um, way of looking at uh, at emission levels obviously because um, current emission levels are measured um, by traded tonnage but the uh, International Maritime Organization, so it's called the IMO, which is the UN organization which measures transport um, in, in shipping, um, only has reports that go out every two or three years, and they've actually finished their last report in 2015. So it being 2020, the next report is supposed to come out in 2021. So looking at external costs at, at a different um, way of mathematically calculating decarbonization of maritime transport, we looked at um, developing um, a mathematical model which would uh, calculate past up, um, up until uh, present. So obviously some of the strategic documents were uh, taken into account. We looked at low emission and zero emission technologies. And the aim was basically to uh, strategize, um, used and developed um, maritime transport and estimate um, external costs incurred by maritime transport and look at the benefits of any type of application that would uh, um, utilize that sort of uh, method. There was a strategic approach to low and zero emission technology. Um, there's an estimation to external uh, costs in the European Union transport system. Description uh, of low and zero emission technology, um, apart from the assessment of the potential, was looked at and a number of important points, um, basically the take home is that external costs accumulate in maritime shipping is necessary for more realistic uh, um, exact estimation. I know it sounds a bit strange. But...
So on the basis that the obtained results from the um, external cost evaluation um, of decarbonization of maritime transport, um, the, there is a, a potential for uh, uh, there is a potential for uh, being able to measure um, without actually counting the actual um, emission levels um, by each uh, ship they being used. The last part of my talk is specific to uh, is specific to uh, a cost action which I'm putting together and for any of the European partners or anyone in Europe that's interested in uh, participating in, in the cost, um, you can email me because we are looking for some uh, expert um, for experts and partners. And the idea is to look at human nature relations and combine the discussion um, on a scientific basis, but also to enact on the ethos of, of the idea that um, since 2019, since the Nobel outbreak of, of, of COVID, it sort of presented a new layer of thinking about everyday life and the future of the next generation per se. And so when we reinforce this with uh, human behavior and environmental change, we can see the reality and we can sort of see how COVID has um, a sort of, uh, it sort of altered the, uh, it sort of altered the, uh, the somewhat of our perception of, uh, of nature because there's sort of a detachment, let's say pre-COVID, for instance, um, in my native Italy, you can go to uh, Milano and um, they're starting to see even like simple wolves walking through the city because of because the people have sort of disappeared. And I'm assuming that's happening in um, most major cities where um, there were less people. For instance, in China, a lot of the larger cities, you can see pollution levels decreasing significantly. So the outbreak of the pandemic has caused COVID-19 basically to change our global, um, has changed sort of the vision of, of the global scene. This is what we call like a world shock. The uh, title of the project is Human Nature Relations and um, it's Building Environmental and Economic Sustainability Post COVID-19. If anyone is interested, you should email me and um, as part of a cost action, so part of the um, Horizon 2020, um, I would be more than interested to hear from uh, participants or from partners that might be interested in participating. So at length, I guess I um, hope everyone is uh, in good health and um, it's quite exciting to uh, continue in the second um, of the two conferences that I've uh, participated in the seventh and now the eighth, and obviously look forward to the ninth um, in person. Uh, Ivana Franceschi is a, quite a beautiful city. So um, I do have to teach in the next two minutes. So I'm happy that uh, I did get the uh, internal message to, uh, to proceed with my uh, presentation. So I wish you all good health and uh, thank you for inviting me. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you for your actually very interesting information, dear professor. So, and now we will be pleased to get valuable information from uh, Professor Richard Tomlins, Program Director of International Center of Transformational Entrepreneurship. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, I have uh, Two short presentations, one as a welcome to the conference and thank you for the honour of giving me this opportunity to speak and I'll present that over five slides or so, might stretch to seven. Uh, and then I'll invite my uh, key partner and colleague from Ifan Tuag, uh, Sana Malinka, to join me for the second presentation. I can see her picture has... Uh, floated onto the screen so good afternoon sana so let me just try and uh present the first presentation 
and I'm assuming that you can all hear me uh, well. So, um, brilliant. I have a note that I'm presenting to everyone, so I'm going to assume that that is happening. And this is uh, my welcome address, which is, um, I noticed that colleagues were talking about disruptive approaches, and I was pleased about that. It gave me confidence that my presentation would be useful and of interest to you. And what I wanted to do was frame, I guess, uh, your predominantly technical understandings of these important subjects for the two days of discussion around perhaps a social science perspective in terms of playfulness for creativity and innovation and to think about the way in which we engender and unleash creativity and innovation through playfulness and to consider that as a disruptive approach and to put that in the context of both education 4.0 and sustainability. So I, I should say as an aside, I hope my English is uh, understandable for you and we won't need the interpreters. I'm uh, glad and amused that I haven't had to follow Michael uh, when I spoke at uh, the Lyceum in Ivano Frankisk. Uh, about 12 months ago, one of the students said, Richard, can you not speak American? However, I will uh, I will dodge the, the amusement of that and show you a picture of Coventry, uh, where the university is based. We're the 10th uh, largest city in the UK, um, importantly for sustainability and entrepreneurial development. We are UK City of Culture from May 21 to May 22, and the announcement of the programme for that is being made about now. Uh, and I would like to invite you to come to Coventry and to uh, enjoy that. Uh, we're a city of peace and reconciliation. We have an active twin city programme, including other cities that have experienced the, uh, the destruction and the reconciliation and regeneration of war. So, for example, we're twinned with cities like Dresden and uh, Hiroshima. And we're famous, uh, perhaps our most famous legend is uh, Lady Godiva, who uh, famously rode through the streets of, of the city naked in a protest at uh, the tax raising of her husband, the Earl of Leofric, and that social activist and social inclusion aspect has remained strong within the city. And I'm going to apply that in the remaining slides to the Sustainable Development Goals, Education 4.0, and the subject of our conference, and invite you to imagine. So we have a regular festival of Imagineers in Coventry, and we would like to think of ourselves as a university in a city of imagination that has, as a city and the university is very much a civic university that has reinvented itself through um, weaving and cloth dyeing through to um, watchmaking through to bicycle manufacturing. The first safety bicycle was uh, for the UK was invented in Coventry through to motor car manufacturing. We built the first motor car in the UK through to advanced manufacturing now. But that spirit of imagination, I think, is critical to the conference theme of sustainability and the way in which the, we're seeking to engage with um, sustainable redevelopment and themes of energy and sustainable energy. And I wanted to put that in the context of the sustainable development goals. I wasn't sure whether colleagues would have done that, but these are the 17 goals that we should have achieved by 2013 um, to ensure that the planet and the people of the planet w are able to uh, achieve a sustainable and a healthy future and I wanted to put this slide on the screen not least because it brings together the technical and the social, a very important 
technical engagement with climate action and clean water and sanitation, but actually reminding us that there is a social aspect to this in terms of responsible consumption and production. And the theme of this short presentation and the slightly longer one with Sana is very much to remind us to take people with us on that journey. And that journey in Coventry and with Godiva in 2012 as part of the Cultural Olympiad to run in parallel with the 2012 Olympics was very much around uh, creating a, a large spectacle. So a group of artists in Coventry came together to conceptualize a 32 foot high walking, moving Lady Godiva puppet uh, and her horse, the carriage, which was pedalled uh, from Coventry to London, theatrically stopping at different locations. Um, the reason for this slide is, again, to amplify that theme that I'm suggesting of the importance of social and technical coming together. The artists have the grand vision of a 32-foot high Lady Godiva, and then they have the question of how do we make this real how do we make this tangible and Coventry has a, a vibrant aerospace engineering industry and uh, different engineering companies from that sector came together to make this vision real. So I wanted to move to Education 4.0 at this stage so Education 4.0 the the buzz phrase for engaging with Industry 4.0 and the step change that we see through technological advancement and the way in which that will take us into a, a, a seamless future where we uh, have a, a post-digital future where uh, technology and digital is second nature to us. And I wanted to focus, I don't know if you can see my cursor, uh, on this person here sat reading and in some of the representations of 4.0 and I think this is a good one and I find it very persuasive however it was very technically orientated so we have the uh, the virtual reality uh, we have the device uh, we have the 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 reference to the web we have the access to the expert uh, and my concern about 4.0 and we'll articulate how we're engaging with that in the slides with Sana in a second is that we lose sight of us our collective us and the importance of us playing a role in shaping that 4.0 and um, that that's very much uh, part of the World Economic Forum agenda. Uh, in Esther and colleagues, uh, you've got the slides, Oleg. Um, you, you're very welcome to share these with, with colleagues so that I don't spend too much time talking. Uh, but very much as we move to the World Economic Forum conceptualization of 4.0, we have a whole swathe of more personalized citizenship skills and personalization. Uh, that I and colleagues at Coventry University regard as, as very important. And as a colleague said this morning, we seek to disrupt. We do business planning through uh, initiatives like Sprint, which originated as a branded concept within Google Ventures and is very much about drawing and having people looking to business plan and rapid prototype and expecting to write and Richard, you expect us to draw. So moving to something which is much more dynamic. Um, and um, colleagues from Ivano Frankis, you will be used to me walking into a room in Ifantuag, uh, where I've got the, the honour of being a visiting professor with a box of Lego and getting people to think in a very uh, childlike and playful manner, but childlike in terms of unleashing emotion and imagination without inhibition and to allow people in a tactile way to conceptualize a 3D future. And this is what you get. You get a, a group of uh, young people. This is Ivano Frankis, this is Ifan Tuag, 
Um, I've walked into a nine o'clock lecture. They've been looking at their devices. They've been uh, staring out of the window. And um, I hope that's not too rude and unkind to them. And suddenly they're, they're engaged. Uh, yes, please in introduce yourself one more time and the uh, topic of your speech, please. Okay, because I don't have your in list of speakers. Uh, so, Rick, Rick. Uh, no, no, I, I want your, our, your and our colleague to introduce next, uh, next uh, speech because I haven't in list this, you know. It will be for tomorrow section, but if you if uh, you want to replace for today, okay, it can be. Uh, so, please, uh, Miss Oksana, <laughs> introduce. Sorry. Yes, yes. So, so Richard Thomas, just just finishing the last the the last couple of slides, and then we'll dovetail with uh, uh, Sana. So, in in. I guess what I'm saying is in, in one conception, we have uh, education 4.0 and the technology conceptualized by uh, the robotic future. Um, but what we're interested in is the way in which innovative economies should be transformative. And by transformative, sometimes it doesn't mean this high tech version, it means something much more playful like this so that is my dovetail that is my invitation for you to collectively play and, and to um, engage your social and technical sides which of course you will do so i'm gonna stop sharing this presentation and come out of this one and i'm going to invite uh, sana to in join me on the virtual stage and I'm going to swap over to uh, the second presentation. Uh, Sana, I can see that you're there. I'm just going to lose you as I um, move to the slide share. Sana, can you hear me okay? Yes, Richard, I can hear you, but to be honest, I cannot see your slides at all. Uh, and to be very honest, I couldn't see your slides, your last slides from your previous presentation. I don't know whether only I have such issues or everyone has them. That doesn't sound good. Uh, well, we will share them, I think, uh, post-session. And um, I'm going to uh, share them now. So. Um, this, this is telling me on my computer that I'm presenting to everyone um, and it tells me it's sharing a window. Sana, can you see anything? Yes, I can see your first slide. It's okay so far. So far, okay. Then we will... Uh, I'm going to go to slideshow. I wonder whether slideshow was the thing that um, corrupted it last time. Probably. Can you still see the slides? Yes. Okay, then we're good. You you have the magic touch without realizing it. So um, we moved to a specific project to um, demonstrate the themes that I talked about and you, you missed out on some wonderful slides. So I hope you'll catch up with those uh, later. Uh, Sana, is there anything that you want to say on this slide before I move it on? Well, probably I could say some words about the disaster management as a concept, uh, which can be defined as the organization and management of resources and responsibilities for dealing with all humanitarian areas, aspects of emergencies, in particular preparedness, response and recovery, in order to lessen the impact of disasters. Uh, well, the first people to respond to a disaster are those living in the local community. The Red Cross and Red Crescent National Societies, therefore, focus on community-based disaster preparedness, uh, which assist, assist communities to reduce their vulnerability to disasters and strengthen their capacities to resist them. Um, disaster management is actually how we deal with the human material, economic or environmental impacts of a disaster. 
It is the process of how we prepare for, respond to, and learn from the effects of major failures. Actually, disaster management can be related to the uh, environmental and social issues management that covers the processes used to identify, avoid, minimize, and mitigate negative impacts. Environmental and social issues may manifest in many different ways and affect the viability of various businesses and societal areas. Environmental use, uh, issues may present themselves as temporary or permanent changes to the atmosphere, water and land due to human activities, uh, which can result in impacts that may be either reversible or irreversible. Social issues may emerge in the workplace and may also impact surrounding communities. Well, namely environmental and social issues include air emissions and air quality, waste, land contamination, labor and working conditions, occupational health and safety, uh, land acquisition and resettlement, cultural heritage, and etc. Richard? So so, well, I'm, I'm going to just move it on uh, a slide for the moment and to say that um, I'll, I'll talk about the specific project a, a little bit more. All I wanted to say on, on this slide was that we put that work around disaster management in the context of resilience and social resilience as well as technical resilience. And we... Uh, measure our progress against the sustainable development goals in that in that context. Sana, do you want to add any more on SDGs? Uh, well, yes, probably. I would like to explain uh, what sustainable development goals mean for disaster management. Uh, well, disaster risk reduction cuts across different aspects and sectors of development. And by the way, there are 25 targets related to disaster risk reduction in 10 of the 17 uh, SDGs, firmly establishing the role of disaster risk reduction as a core development strategy. Uh, the diverse changes and interlinked uh, uncertainties of globalization and climate change demand societies to become more and more flexible to withstand crisis reinventing themselves in resilient, integrated, sustainable, multidimensional and inclusive ways. A broader concept of systemic resilience uh, must be developed that recognizes the interconnectedness, uh, volatility, uncertainty and complexity of challenges. This concept must address uh, the challenges in a sustainable and inclusive way as both solution and a preventative approach to new crises. This means making the concept of leaving no one behind a reality and bringing the poorest and most marginalized to participate fully in the society. So resilient, sustainable and inclusive societies demand a shift beyond transactional approaches to development towards a collective perspective of joint social capital values such as mutual trust, solidarity, helpfulness and friendliness that strengthen the international cooperation. Countries must cooperate to address the systemic and overlapping inequalities in wealth distribution, gender, income, disability, age and ethnicity. Richard, please go on. Well, that, that mutual trust is very important, and that's what we've been looking at in terms of our project. So, uh, ba, 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 screen has just frozen. Um, here we go. Um, so, uh, the project that we're using to test ideas uh, around uh, disaster management, but also... Um, a more forward-looking look to the skills required for education 4.0 and for uh, the progressive future of society is ACES, which is uh, an acronym for uh, the project title and in essence is looking at play. So you'll remember that theme 
from uh, the first presentation, you might not have seen all the graphics, but the last two graphics, had you been able to see them, and I hope that at least some of you did, was uh, a robot on the last but one graphic with the, um, if you like, the uh, stereotype of the technological and technical future. And the very final slide was uh, a woman in a workshop envisaging a technical future uh, and using cardboard to do that. Uh, and what we've been looking at is the way in which play within the educational process can develop social resilience and working. Uh, you should be able to see three globes uh, or a heart and two globes maybe. Uh, we've been working with community and being playful and looking to develop resilience in that context and the disaster management focus of that is um, enshrined in the project because we've been using a, uh, a measurement framework uh, of Sardar and colleagues which is from a uh, disaster management context uh, to look at the way in which resilience can be developed as a resource and as a process going forward. So Sarge sees and colleagues see these five sub-dimensions, social structure, social capital, social mechanisms and competencies and values, social equity and diversity, and social beliefs, culture and faith as both the outcomes that we should be aiming for within community so that we can engage with technology uh, but also the processes so that we can become a stronger society. Sana, shall I move on? Is there anything you want to add to that slide? No, it's all perfect so please move on. So this has been a stream of work of uh, myself and colleagues so uh, it goes back to 2013, 2014, and the founding of something called the Disruptive Media Learning Laboratory at Coventry, uh, and a series of projects which have largely been led by an incredibly creative colleague called Professor Sylvester Arnab. And again, if people want to message me after my contact details and Sana's contact details are at the end of the slide deck. Um, there's a trajectory in terms of um, stakeholder input, so co-production co leading to co-creation. So we try and onboard people, get you involved in plain English. We try and infuse you. Uh, we entice you with play, infuse you with the excitement of play, and through that develop mastery, including uh, technical mastery, and most importantly, ownership and therefore consolidation. Sana, you might want to say more about this slide though. Uh, yes, probably I will tell a few words about uh, social resilience and education. So resilience is about advancing uh, despite adversity. Social resilience concerns on social entities and grassroots communities capabilities or capacities to cope with and or respond and adjust or transform to social, political and environmental changes. Education has a critical role in building transformative capacities that go beyond the formal context, uh, which can directly improve young people's resilience and welfare towards promoting innovation and social and economic diversification. And playful learning offers the characteristics and opportunities for developing resilience. This involves non-disciplinary capabilities to ensure our young people can adapt and strive in the uncertainties. Richard, please. So we have, um, we, we play, we get paid for playing, Sana. Um, we have a... Uh, a more traditionally heavyweight paper within the uh, conference pack uh, tomorrow on Toyota and knowledge transfer. But actually, I'm going to suggest we get most of our value from playing and the current project, the ACES project. Um, and we're looking to transfer that learning into, if in Tuog, uh, my shorthand for 
uh, this esteemed university in Ivano Frankivsk. Uh, but the ACES project itself that we're talking about focuses on three countries with Coventry and UK as a partner. Indonesia, Malaysia and Vietnam and even though I've um, worked in two of those three countries before they've been very much in urban settings and one of the challenges for us has been to uh, look at social resilience and technology um, in environments which look quite unfamiliar to, to me. This is, this is Vietnam. Um, uh, rural Vietnam and I'd only been to urban Vietnam so um, the playfulness and education and education 4.0 I'm going to suggest looks quite different um, in a geography like this and where the distance to school is such that children will have to stay at school overnight to be able to be there for school for the next day so it puts uh, initiatives like stem which sana will talk about in a second and education 4.0 into a very different context very relevant still but the way in which we operationalize it is very much the the focus for um that project and for our talk and for our focus on playfulness and there we go Sana we, we're at your STEM slide. Uh, yes indeed so what is STEM education? STEM is a curriculum based on the idea of uh, educating students in four specific disciplines science, technology, engineering and mathematics uh, in an interdisciplinary and applied approach. Uh, so rather than teach the four disciplines as separate and discrete subjects, STEM integrates them into a cohesive learning paradigm based on real-world applications. Uh, what separates STEM from the traditional science and math education is uh, the blended, uh, blended learning environment and uh, showing students how the scientific method can be applied to everyday life. Uh, it teaches students computational thinking and focuses on the real-world applications of problem-solving. Uh, most of the STEM curriculum is aimed toward attracting underrepresented populations. Uh, female students, for example, are significantly less likely to pursue a college major or career. Uh, though this is nothing new, the gap is increasing at a significant rate Male students are also more likely to pursue engineering and technology fields, while uh, female students uh, prefer science fields like biology, chemistry and marine biology. Overall, male students are three times more likely to be interested in pursuing a STEM career. STEM career. The importance of STEM education is emphasized by the next generation science standards, which were designed to improve how students comprehend and apply science. Uh, STEM education typically focuses on project-based learning in the classroom. Uh, the projects and activities incorporate technology to emphasize the application of science and prepare students for future classes. Please, Richard. Well, I, I'm going to say that if you look at this slide, it seems to embody the conference, doesn't it? So we, we have a conference which is around sustainability in energy and environmental science. And you have young people here in Vietnam uh, engaged the, the base skills for that and uh, STEM brought to Vietnam through a, a famous con test robotic however um the, i'm going to present a, a big contrast in terms of the next two slides which in terms of operationalizing that in in those rural settings is whoops gone too fast sana um is uh this is what it looks like So it's young people playing, it's young people um, engaging with movement and shape and as a result energy and it's frugal innovation and it's repurposing uh, technical devices, tyres, 
uh, in this case for other purposes. And uh, the, the engagement that you see from these pictures is, again, that, that theme. and technical solutions around energy and environmental science in that context. And um, for those of you that are interested in this, as, as much as I uh, um, take boxes of Lego into classrooms and as much as I get people to draw, there is a science and a pedagogy behind this, of course, uh, which uh, we can talk about outside uh, this forum, which is around uh, the, the, the way in which play connects us neurally and the way in which uh, the, the tactile element connects with the brain. So this is, this is the final slide and the, the purpose of the welcome slides, and again, apologies if you couldn't see those, uh, we'll share those uh, via Oleg and uh, Inesta and their good offices. Um, um, thank you for listening. What we've sought to do is to talk about play as an important component in the buy-in, the onboarding, if you like, and the learning behind sustainability in energy and environmental science, and to talk about the way in which the social and the technical in our minds have to come together because we need um, us people from different communities to operationalize those technical gains. Um, final slide is our contact details. If anyone wants to grab a, a screen grab of that, contact us directly or through the conference offices. I'm teaching for much of uh, these two days. Uh, but we're, we're, we're both very available. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your patience and thank you for the honour of letting us speak. Thank you very much. Thank you for your very interesting and valuable information. Thank you, Mr. Uh, dear professor. And, uh, now, and now I want to uh, invite, I want to invite uh, founder and uh, chief executive officer at YEP network of academic uh, startup incubators, Mr. Andriy Zaikin, Ukraine, please. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Andriy Zaikin, and I am a founder of YEP. YEP is a network of academic startup incubators. So my topic and main uh, like tips which I uh, provide is uh, innovation, startups, and entrepreneurship. So uh, in these terms, I can say that we already have been developing the entrepreneurial ecosystem in Ukrainian universities uh, all of us last four years. In particular, we productively cooperate with ivano Frankivsky University. So I really thank you for inviting me and for having me here and uh, i have i will have a chance to uh, tell a lot of a lot more about the innovation in on 26 on a special separate uh, session uh, like today i just uh, want to mention in context of innovation and entrepreneurship i just want to mention one my favorite uh, quote of one wise man uh, Jeff Nicholson, who says that uh, in context of innovation and inventions, so he says that inventions, it's kind of transformation of money into knowledge, and it's about scientific stuff, yeah? And on the other hand, innovation is transformation of knowledge into money. So it's more about already entrepreneurship stuff. So uh, my, I kind of, encourage all of you who uh, create some innovative products keep in mind this approach and uh, create and build great innovative products and uh, make it profitable because it's uh, entrepreneurship if we talk about entrepreneurship and startups uh, i will tell the, i will tell more about this on 26 and now i wish you 
productive next few days in collaboration within this conference and wish you a great great conference and thank you very much for inviting me thank you for your kind greetings and information yes i will uh, remind one more time at the end of all this plenary section about this our event which has to be at 26 k yeah. thank you very much have a nice day you have a nice day too. So now I want to invite uh, to invite Dr. Professor Ramesh Chandra Rath from Einstein Einstein Academy of Technology and Management, India. If he is online, please. He is not online. Ramesh, Ramesh, please. He is not online now. He is not online. No, okay, let's. Uh, Let's call next next speaker in our uh, list. Uh, so I invite uh, Professor Doctor of Science in Physics and Mathematics, Head of Department of Computer Sciences and uh, Information System from Kyiv National University of Trade and Economics, Ukraine, Mr. Oleg uh, Pursky, please. If he is online, oh, very nice. Welcome. Do you like this switch on your microphone? Okay. Are you see my presentation? Yes. No, now we see only you, but not your presentation. Uh, listen to me. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. We hear you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Firstly, I would like to express my thanks uh, to the organizers of uh, the International Scientific Conference for the provided discussion platform, for the rich and fruitful conference program, and the relevance to, of the topics proposed. And then, let me present to your attention a report of the result of our research on the topic information system for assisting environment and regional development based on the factor analysis and expert evaluation. About problem, shortly. The main problem that arise in environmental studies is real conclusion. In statistical calculations, the importance of uh, scientific indicator of, uh, of the importance of specific indicators for the environment for the environmental system is not taken into account. In this case, only the weight average of such indicator is considered. This problem is solved by expert evaluation. Technology and the experience of expert make it possible to run the indicators in the terms of their importance for ensuring the eff effective of the environmental system. At the same time, however, expert evaluation fails to establish the correlation between environmental indicators. This task is successfully managed by factor analysis. It is an expert statistical option that is most suitable science take into account technology and experience of expert in the calculation significantly increases the reliability of the conclusion obtained in the study. At the same time, it gives is uh, it gives uh, a change to perform an analysis by establishing correlation between uh, indicator and to determine to, to determine the influence of the change of a particular indicator on the state of environmental system. Thus, the problem of assessment formalization for regional environmental development is being solved. In our, in our earlier studies, descri uh, described 
computation method for determination of the regional development integral indicator based on the method of factor analysis and expert evaluation, which is used for automatization computation of integral indicator of environmental development in presented information system. Due to the above said, the purpose of our study is to develop an information system for assisting in environmental regional development based on the joint using the factor analysis and expert evaluations. Uh, at this slide, you can see uh, at this slide you can see developed the uh, model uh, for determination for determination of uh, integrated indicators of the environmental economic development. Uh, the software implementation of information system uh, is carried out on the basis of calculation algorithm using factor analysis and expert evaluation that presented at this slide. The web, uh, uh, at this slide, you can see uh, the two main branch of algorithm. Uh, the first branch is connected with uh, using in calculation factor analysis, particular principal component method. And the second uh, branch of algorithm is connected with using in calculation uh, uh, expert evaluation. The web system created for the purpose of providing access to the function of assessing the level of environmental development and use in the system of regional development. Figure three, uh, present a uh, database model used in determining integrated indicator of environmental economic development of regions. The following elements of the database uh, are used in the development of the model. Uh, region of Ukraine, district of region of Ukraine, environmental economic indicators, factors and experts. Software implementation of the method of calculated integrated indicator of uh, regional development is carried out in the C sharp programming language. The gateway for communication with database is a PHP interface that provides the generation of queries to the database and the formation of query results. Communication of the web application and PHP gateway is carried out according to the HTTP protocol. Based on the parameter of get method of the HTTP protocol, the corresponding queries to the database are formed. The resulting samples uh, are serialized in the format JSON for transfer to the web application. If you need to save data in the database, the web application uh, forms an object in the format JSON. In the PHP gateway, there is uh, deserialization the object obtained by the deserialization uh, the object obtained in the post HTTP protocol as well as the formation of appropriate queries to the database replace or update and uh, uh, the block diagram uh, of the web developed web application is presented in figure four. The web application is implemented using MVVM pattern. The main element of the web application are main window, admin panel, section from result displaying, section from indica for indicators edition and displaying of intermediate results, interactive map, uh, context display. Uh, this slide presents the main window of the development web system. Uh, important aspect of the development web system uh, are, 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 are automatization of our calculation and support of work, of work in the network internet, which provide access to all its resource of territorially distributed users. The interface of web application is implemented on the software platform Microsoft Silverlight and includes the following modules. Controls 
that provide user identification, verification of input data, and provide access to web application function according to the user's level access. Control that provides language, language selections. Interactive graphical representation of the region of Ukraine. Interactive map with possibility of choosing a particular region. Block for displaying of information about selected region. Module for obtaining and addition environmental and economic indicator for specific region. Block displayed of the result of calculation of uh, integrated indicators and correlation be and correlation between socioeconomic indicators indicators in the form of table or diagrams. And the uh, administration module for addition and addition web application content and system user data. And uh, the application is decision to work with three groups of users, administrators, administrator, data editors, and regular users. And web application provide access to controls depending on the level of access of particular users. Uh, <coughs> after uh, after authentication, depending on the user's level of access to system resource, a program icon with the appropriate access to the control of the web applications opens. Figure 6 shows the web application uh, in the mode of access to controls. Uh, to enter and edit the indicators values used in calculation, it is need to activate the module calculation. Right. At this slide, you can see a process of activation of the calculation modules. Uh, present, presenting the result of calculation of integrator, integrated indica indicators uh, is carried out by using the module results. The modules contain tables of integrated indicators and their, and their graphical representation in the form of diagram and the table of indicators names with visualization of their correlation in the form, in the form uh, of the in the form of diagrams. Uh, at this slide, you can see diagram of correlation between the environmental economic indicators uh, and conclusions. Uh, the web system uh, for assessing the environmental economic development of region of Ukraine developed and implemented with the help of modern software allows analyzing regional development, identifying the cause of positive and negative trend, determine the list of the most important environmental indicator to focus on and build regional development strategies. The development information system allow, allows taking into account the peculiarities of regional development through the differentiation or in the system of indicators and provide opportunity to change the list of indicators depending on the goals and sub and the objectives of monitors. The application of differentiation in system of indicators explain a variation in assessment of environmental and economic condition of specific region and increase the reliability of assessment. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> you welc welcome. Thank you for your interesting information, dear professor, and participation in our conference. So, and uh, we have next uh, speaker, please, uh, Doctor of Sciences in Economics, professor and head of the Department of Economics and Finance, Ternopil Ivan Pului National Technical University, Ukraine. Lena Panuknik, please. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues and partners. I am happy to greet the participants of the conference from different countries, scientists and professionals who are concerned about the issues of sustainable development of economy, energy and ecology. Uh, 
let me introduce my presentation. Can you see my presentation? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. In spite of a special situation, I hope for presentation of a lot of interesting scientific project and active exchange of ideas. I am sure that uh, uh, online format of the conference won't become an obstacle uh, for communication and development of recognitions for further collaboration and partnership. On uh, behalf of uh, my team of authors, I express our sincere gratitude to the organization committee of the conference for the invitation to take part in it. We offer your attention the report, Modeling of Bioenergy Impact on Food Security, uh, on Food Product Security in European Countries. Today, ensuring energy independence is one of the key, of, uh, is one of the key challenges facing Ukraine, and I, ignoring this issue is a global destabilizing factor which in turn leads to a decline of the economy and consequently national security. One of the ways to solve this problem is a large-scale introduction and use of uh, renew renewable energy sources. Energy diversification is an objective reality uh, that uh, will determine the development of key sectors of the economy and uh, form the basis of the country's energy independence. Production and use of bioenergy are growing at a very rapid pace in countries where the government, business, scientists and investors are involved in this sector. The main task of modern research in the field of barrier energy is to find the most effective solutions in terms of sustainable development and uh, should be aimed at uh, food and energy security, economic and social development. The aim of the research is to study the correlation between the share of energy from renewable sources and food security indices, the share of bioenergy in total primary production, and food security indices using statistical methods. The initial uh, data for the study were official statistics energy balances, scientific literature on determining uh, the foundations of food security, and the development of the national economy. Indicators of bioenergy production and uh, the share of energy from uh, renewable sources were taken from the energy reports of the countries posted in the Eurostat website. The food security indices consider the core issues of affordability, availability, and quality across a set of countries. Countries. The methodology for food security indices was developed by the Economist Intelligence Unit, including a consulting panel of experts. Our study aims at analyzing the food security indices of 
16 European countries, including Ukraine, from 2012 to 2018, and discovering their correlation with the share of bioenergy in the total primary production and overall share of energy from renewable sources. The end result is to find out which countries are most and least uh, uh, vulnerable uh, to food security as bioenergy production increases. The food security indices taken into account included overall index of food security, affordability, uh, availability, quality and safety, change in uh, arid food costs, the proportion of the population on the global uh, poverty line, gross domestic product per capita, agricult agricultural import tariffs, presence and quality of food safety uh, net programs, access to financing for farmers, the uh, sufficiency of supply, public expenditure on agriculture R&D, R&D, agricultural infrastructure, the uh, volatility of agricultural production, political uh, stability risk, corruption, urban consumption capacity, food loss, dietary uh, diversity, new uh, nutritional standard, micronutrient availability, protein quality, food safety. The final result is to discover which countries are most and least uh, vulnerable to food security when bioenergy production increases. As a result of the study of indicators for Poland, it was found out that uh, there is a direct and close correlation between the index food availability and a share of bioenergy in total primary production. Correlation between the indicators share of bioenergy in total primary production and food availability is shown in figure 1a, slide 9. Significant progress in the agricultural sector, sector of Poland is accompanied by the development of bioenergy. As we can see, the agricultural sector does not suffer from the development of bioenergy. There is also a direct correlation between the index gross domestic products per capita and share of bioenergy in total primary production. The correlation between the indicators gross domestic product per capita is depicted in figure 1b, slide 9. However, among the studies correlations, there is only one statistically significant inverse relationship between the risk of political stability in Poland and the share of bioenergy production. And it is no secret uh, that the development of bioenergy often depends on the political will on the heads of state and uh, a stable political course of the country as such development is based on a favorable legal framework and public investment. The correlation between the indicators share of bioenergy in total primary production and political stability risk in Poland is presented in figure 2, slide 10. The correlation between the general indicator of food security and biofuel production is direct. Is direct. The results show that between bioenergy uh, bio production 
and uh, renewable energy sources in Poland, and the main food safety indices, uh, safety indices are either not correlate, correlate at all, or they have a direct relationship that is which increasing bioenergy production, the food safety indices increases. Analyzes the indicators in Germany, it was found out that there is a direct correlation between the overall food safety index and the share of bioenergy production and with the overall share of energy uh, from renewable sources. That is, the production of bio, uh, biofuels does not affect the overall food safety index, which could be stated in the inverse correlation. In Spain, in Spain, correlations are found only between the index food loss and the share of bioenergy in total primary production. Unlike other countries, in Spain, there is an inverse relationship between the corruption index and indication, indicators of bioenergy development. It is likely that the corruption component prevents from implementation of bioenergy projects. In the Czech Republic, a direct correlation was determined for the agricultural infrastructure index and the share of bioenergy in total primary production. Accordingly, we can conclude that the development of the bioenergy sector is associated with the logistic of agricultural enterprises. The inverse relationship between the index change of average food costs and the share of bioenergy in total primary production is one of the elements confirming the absence of the threat to food security of the state. Correlation between the indicators change in average food costs and share of bioenergy in total primary production in the Czech Republic is shown in figure 4, this slide 13. Thus, the analysis of the modeling of bioenergy impact on food security of European countries allowed us to draw the following conclusions. According to the results of statistical studies, no correlations were found between food security indices and the share of bioenergy and renewable energy sources in aid out of 13 countries. According to indicators of the countries we study, the agricultural sector does not suffer losses with the development of bioenergy. Bioenergy contributes to the development of the local economy, rural, uh, rural uh, areas and improvement of the infrastructure. In some countries, countries G, G, GDP growth is directly correlated with bioenergy production, which is noticeable in particular in the example of Poland. Also, it was found out that biofuel production does not affect the overall food safety index, and these indicators have a direct correlation that is show common growth trends. The statistically significant inverse correlation between the risk of political stability and uh, the share of bioenergy production indicates the dependence of the sector on the political will of the country's leadership and a stable political course 
as such development is based on a favorable legal framework and public investment in the industry. Thus, a necessary precognition for the development of the bioenergy sector is a prudent public policy that takes into account all aspects, including food security. At the same time, in Germany, by energy production effects, the arid costs of food with increasing costs. Therefore, the development of bioenergy in the state can also be determined by the enver uh, environmental uh, consciousness of its citizens. Thanks a lot for your attention. You're welcome. Thank you, dear professor, for interesting presentation and information also. Uh, so uh, for for today, uh, all our speaker uh, speakers had the ability to make their presentation and uh, give us interesting and current natural information. And we are grateful, grateful to them for this and for participation in our conference uh, and now I'm going to make an hour for tomorrow our, for next hour uh, so tomorrow we will have three sections section meetings section one will start please note somewhere uh, according to program of uh, our conference Session number one will start from 10 up to 12 o'clock. Session uh, number two from 12 up to uh, 14 o'clock. And session number three from 14 up to 16 o'clock. Uh, link for uh, join the session is the same as for this uh, plenary, plenary meeting. The same link, it will be entrance for these uh, sessions of our conference. Then, um, next I want to yes. announce also that in frame of our conference, uh, we will provide a training in innovative uh, entrepreneurship and uh, startup ecosystem, which will be provided by University of Coventry, England, and Academy Business, uh, Incubator, yeah. Uh, the exact date and the link also, also for joining this uh, trainership will be sent to your emails. Please don't lose this uh, chance to have this trainership and have some, let's say, new knowledges and maybe some documents. So, and uh, the last. <laughs> Uh, I would uh, announce, let's say, also uh, some information about our university. It is uh, maybe some some possibilities for us to, to let's say, learn new technology to make uh, these online, confer uh, online conferences. But sometimes it is good, sometimes not good. We don't have possibility, you don't have possibility to to see our university, to know uh, some information about it. And right now we want to correct, correct this situation and uh, want to show you a film about Ivano Frankiv's National Technical University of Oil and Gas. Please don't, don't go see the interesting film, really. And for today, it will be all and see tomorrow, please, right now film about university. Okay, good.
Mm-hmm. I don't want to. Yeah, because you're not here. Now it's my turn. <laughs> What's next? My congratulations. We've just become first year students of the Ivana Frankins National Technical University of Oil and Gas. Cool. Listen, does this bleed off? That's nice. I don't know. The university was founded in 1967. It consists of eight institutes, three colleges, and a physics and technical lyceum. There are over 800 teachers, almost 10,000 students, including 500 from 42 countries. Students receive a bachelor's degree in 35 specialties and a master's degree in 43. And there are also seven dissertation councils for doctoral and master's thesis at the university. One in every 20 students at the university is a foreigner, and this turns this institution of higher education into a multinational platform for cultural exchange. Foreign students do not live separately. They're in touch with both Ukrainian students and each other, and the university creates all the conditions for their integration and safety. This work is carried out by the Center for International Education. Its staff recruits foreign students and then deal with their issues in Ukraine. This includes organizing tours and taking part in any concerts that greatly facilitate their adaptation in Ukraine. We also maintain contacts with Ukrainian embassies in other states, as well as foreign embassies in Ukraine. Foreign students spend their first year of study at the preparatory department. The main thing is to learn the Ukrainian language. But do you know best amidst the trend because we can say common sense, we can buy things, talk to people. Ivana from Kiev differs from Kiev. Everyone speaks Ukrainian here, and I like it more. I came to Ukraine, so I have to speak Ukrainian. Everyone who wants to can do it. In addition to the language, the teachers of the preparatory department often organize entertainment activities, games, or tours for students. We try to travel with them as much as possible. Every trip is usually accompanied by trying on Ukrainian clothes or tasting Ukrainian dishes. This greatly helps them to study our culture, to adapt to our everyday life. Each of the now more than 500 foreign students has a personal story to tell how he or she got to study in Ivana Frankensk. But they all begin with how they heard so many good things about this institution of higher education. Just about this online, because I was looking for an investment tool to attend. Just about this online, in Ukraine, because schools here they are cheaper compared to other countries. So I so saw Ukraine, and I wanted to do oil and gas engineering, so I had to go to, and I discovered this was the best in Ukraine. This university certificate is recognized by our Iraqi Ministry of Education. But the thing I like most of all, that every teacher is interested in the knowledge being acquired by students, what they should know, just like it should be. This university degree is the road to my success. Many of my friends graduated from it, and now they work in different companies at home. It has sufficient highly qualified staff to teach foreigners and Ukrainians where there is a will. The oil and gas machines and equipment department has a full scale installation of a deep well pump for oil production. Classes are held here for student mechanics and technologists. Not only mechanics involved in service in such machines, but also technologists who work with deposits should know and understand such installations, their design and the principles of operation. They are also taught how to collect the flow well bundled to get gas or oil naturally under the effect of reservoir pressure. There are four wells in our laboratory at a depth of 200 meters. Within each well, there is pumping equipment that's used in the fields. This full-scale equipment enables students to practice, to acquire all the necessary skills on its operation, and to learn how to service this equipment.
як його обслуговувати. The neighboring laboratory containing drilling equipment, hydro machines, and compressors introduces student mechanics and drillers to the elements of drilling machines. Downhole and ground equipment of the drilling unit scaled to 1 to 10 is used as a training model. For example, students practice the correct assembly sequences for a drill tower. For example, whether to raise it already prepared from the ground or collect it from the bottom up or even top down. The work of the drilling unit will depend directly on the quality of the installation. A low quality installation may result in emergency situations arising all the time. Such models, as created by the department's researchers, are used for studying round trip operations that are considered the most labor intensive and dangerous when drilling a well. <laughs> Choreographic groups and art music ones are welcoming all those interested into their ranks. The university has about a dozen choreographic vocal and instrumental studios, even a theatrical one where students can express their creative potential. All sorts of events are held there on a regular basis. The local center for culture and leisure consists of rehearsal rooms and a large assembly hall with all the necessary concert equipment. Students can share their sporting skills here. The AP Hamla Sports Complex has five halls for various sports, four open outdoor areas, and a 25-meter swimming pool. Instead of physical education, students go to sports clubs twice a day. Football, basketball, volleyball, chess, swimming. There is a total of 13 sections, and everyone can choose as they wish. This is the stadium of the AP Hamba University Sports Complex. Running lanes and a football pitch were rebuilt here recently. Now it meets Olympic standards. It can host international competitions. The next stage of reconstruction is large-scale repair of 5,000-seater grandstands. Behind me, you can see a modern drilling rig control panel. The scale is one-to-one, -one, but without a well, we're actually in the drill center. This center trains people to correctly determine the condition of a well, as well as how to prevent or eliminate fluid kicks, which are oil or gas emissions. It's not only senior students, but also experienced drillers, drilling masters, or technologists attend these classes. There are about 150 such centers around the world, but this is the only one in Ukraine. On competition of the training course, its graduates receive an international certificate, which enables them to work in any country of the world. Who would turn down the chance to work oneself as a driller? I was entrusted with BOP, low off prevention equipment. I'm almost a driller. Here's a real drilling rig. Everyone who gets here is instructed on the labor safety and that he receives a protective helmet. Come on. The installation as a university's training base has been operating since 2003. Practical exercises are held each year for hundreds of students. This is a driller's place of work. It's a drilling rig control panel. It is here that the driller raises and lowers the winch, monitors the pressure, the speed of both motors, and the entire system control panel. As you probably know, I do not like museums, but this one impressed me. And here's why. In 1929, the world learned of a unique find. 20,000-year-old rhino remains were found in the village of Starunia in Ivano-Frankivsk region. The thing is that the rhino got into an ozakarit that embalmed it. That is why it's been preserved like it was in those days. And university students created a layout devoted to this find. Simply incredible. While the rest of the museum is also good. Gold, silver, platinum some super rare minerals, even a fragment of a meteorite. Exposition watchers regard this collection the largest and most valuable in Europe. 
and it has been collected for more than a hundred years. And a long time ago, geologists such as Julian Bebeski, the museum's founder, were as popular as rock stars. There was a search for new compounds of minerals, rare minerals, that is most of them were taken from fields and are completely exhausted. That is, it's impossible to restore the same collection in our time. Historically and geographically, the museum would have collected exhibits from low continents, including Antarctica. This circumstance allowed the collection to get the status of a scientific object that is part of the Ukrainian national heritage. The university has some modern laboratories opened with the support of private companies where students work. Companies do this to hire a qualified specialist who can work with modern equipment in the future. Here's one of them. So this is a laboratory of rinsing fluids used in drilling. Here, future drillers study the properties of those liquids that are needed to remove sludge, which is waste generated as a result of drilling. And this is the laboratory for well cementing solutions. Here, students learn a recipe for preparing a solution for fortifying well walls. Each recipe is different and depends on the geological conditions of the drilling site. I'm now in the hardware and software laboratory. It's better not to touch this red button. In the laboratory, students acquire the skills needed to work in the field, for example, in compressor stations. They work with controllers and converters on control panels, including oil and gas industry equipment. I think our viewers have already understood that Sergei is obviously unable to find interesting places in universities. That's not the case with me. I'm at the U Energy Science City, and it's the most interesting branch of this institution of higher education. So let's go. Well, I see. I'm not going to be an astronaut. Guys, let's look at science in action. We studied air flows in physics classes. Now it's possible to demonstrate how all of this works. An airflow with the same force constantly pressing on this ball from all sides, and which, in so doing, seems to keep it in the air. And look how you can do this. Here's something for music and sports lovers. If you want to listen to music, then turn the pedal. At least they said that it should work. But at such moments, you start to appreciate such simple things as batteries and electric current. In fact, this incredible science city is not for entertainment, not just for fun. Here, children, students, and adults understand the complex principles of science. On the contrary, here you can touch everything and do various activities. Each exhibit is interactive. It's possible to interact with it. And by doing so, one can recognize the laws of physics, chemistry, fundamental principles of energy efficiency. Tours are conducted on a regular basis in the center for those who are interested. Most visitors, of course, are children, but a third of visitors are adults. University students hold classes, conferences, or some informal scientific events here, or they can even join the center team to offer and put their projects into action. It's interesting events. This is what will make our Ukraine progressive and modern in the future. Besides knowledge of the extraction of traditional sources of energy, oil and gas, students also study how to obtain energy from nature, from the sun, water and the wind. 
There are facilities in modern laboratories that enable us to simulate renewable energy sources, wind turbines, solar panels, heat pumps, etc. Future electricians and energy managers work in these installations. They are currently applying their knowledge in the area of energy auditing. We provide energetic observation as a private building, Roman buildings, buildings in the social sphere, this is a school, the school of children. We're training experts who have the right to conduct inspections and issue energy certificates for buildings. Classes are also held on energy management or business organization for soldiers who served in the ATO. Well, this is our special permanent column. What sort of city is this? Where are in Ivana from Kiss? Trains, planes, and automobiles will get you here. There are many sites to see and places to visit in Frankivsk. It's a very comfortable and cozy city, and very friendly people live here. Ivana from Kiss is the capital of the tastiest Carpathian cuisine. Visit any cafe around, and you'll see it. There are dozens of interesting Carpathian villages and towns around Ivanovkis. In winter, it's very convenient to get to several ski resorts from here. If you want to go abroad, that's easy too. You can leave the city in the morning and have dinner in Krakow or Budapest. I wanted to tell you a serious thing. If there had been such museums in my childhood, I would probably have become a famous scientist. I'm very impressed with what I have seen. I was impressed by true professionals who are truly devoted to their work. They share their knowledge with future generations of drillers and oil workers, gas workers, gas workers too. We were at the Ivana from Kids National Technical University of Oil and Gas. That's all. Bye now. Think big. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Uh, see you tomorrow. Have a nice day.